Hello, hello, hello. How is everybody doing? Welcome to my isolated, my social isolation, my bunker. Um, I, uh, I'm not in uh, social isolation, um, but I am, uh, I am practicing social distancing. Um, and because probably like many of you, um, you end up having an entire house of people and everyone is trying to find like, where do I hide? Uh, so today I have decided to, my, my husband has taken their bedroom, our kids have taken the entire floor, um, our nanny is here, and myself, I have, uh, I have carved off a place in my basement, so hence the, the beautiful sheet. Um, I think some of you are not on mute, or you taking yourself, you should be automatically on mute, but if you are not, um, let's please mute 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 okay welcome 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 so this is really exciting for me um i do typically do you know um i'll do the occasional full day training or half day training this is my first time hosting something this large um in front of an online medium but as we all know business has changed, hasn't it? And, uh, and so we have to just roll with the punches. So I'm so glad to have so many of you here. I have allowed it to be really come in, come out um, as much as you can. If you're available to stay for the entire four hours, I really appreciate it. Um, if you're not able to, that's okay. Um, the sessions are recorded. So you're gonna have the recording portion of, of the webinar. Really, this isn't, I want this not to be focused entirely on sitting and listening to Kim talk for four hours because you know I could take the time, but I don't want to. I want this to be about you. I want you, I want you to get an experience that you might not get um, in any of our other, other sessions. This is about practicing. This is about training. This is about collaborating with others. So we're going to be doing a little bit of training. We're going to be pushing you all into different breakout rooms and groups of four and five sometimes where once we once you learn something you're now going to be able to apply it how exciting is that and today's focus is going to be entirely on are you creating a great opener so that when you do reach out to people that we're able to connect with them and how are you ultimately getting those meetings and I am okay I am okay if the meetings that are booked aren't booked in the next week or two, okay? Like, let's be honest here. If you can, if you can have a meeting that is going to be available through, through Zoom, such as this, um, I know you can see all of my face. Um, I can't see any, everyone else's computers turned off and that's absolutely fine. When you get to your breakout rooms, feel free to turn your camera on and let people see. Oh, hello, Adil. Thank you. <laughs> Yay. We have, we have one brave smiley. Oh, we have a few more of you that are brave and smiley, shiny faces, Dennis and Sergey and Dan. Oh, well, thank you. I do want you to make sure that you are all on mute. Um, we're getting a lot of people jumping in here. I'm just spending a little bit more time talking, uh, but this is the intention of today. So there's going to, we're going to kind of cover two big topics. The first one is, can you create an opener? that will create enough interest to get people to want to do this. I want to be very clear. We are not talking about selling here. This is not about selling. This is about serving. This is about helping to get people to be future focused, optimistic. Remember, September is still around the corner. And when we think about where we want to be in September, in June, in July, that's actually very positive. So let's help to bring that hope, that, that of opportunity back into people's lives. And if, if it happens to be a, a conversation where we're able to invite more people in, they want to meet with us, great. That is ultimate. If it's okay, it, it's okay to book a meeting two weeks or a month in advance. At the end of the day, I believe a meeting in the calendar is better than no meeting. So if people just aren't ready to meet with you or they're not comfortable meeting with you on Zoom. But part of the reason why I love Zoom is because we use technology to our benefit. That is also fantastic. So let's, uh, we're constantly getting people, I'm hearing doorbells nonstop. I want to share with you just a little bit of information though. So we're going to get started. So we're going to have, so like I said, this is going to be twofold creating that great opener, and then finally actually reaching out to people. Because I believe that this is a perfect time to start creating those brand new connections. I believe this is a perfect time to reach out to those people that we've already wanted to reach out to. 
So we're going to get started here with a little bit of information and then I'm going to take some time and I'm going to break you out all out into breakout rooms. Oh, let's see, we have people coming in. Let me just get myself organized. I'm so excited. Thank you guys all so much for, thank you all so much for being here. Um, it is an absolute pleasure to have you here with me. So today, so I hope you all have a pen and paper. If you don't, now's your time to go grab one. We are going to also put a couple breaks in between, um, in between the sessions, um, just so that uh, four hours is a really long time. And I also need my own personal little like five minute breaks. Uh, when that happens, you're going to see a timer that's going to come up on the calendar and, um, and then we'll count down for five minutes or so. Uh, we'll bring everyone back into the breakout rooms. So so right now we're going to be focusing on creating that great opener. So in, in our typical program in KO Sales Zoom, we focus on a few different things. Uh, the first one is around the buyer persona or who is our ultimate client. And the biggest thing that we focus on in the buyer persona is what, I mean, minus your demographics, which in a lot of, um, a lot of marketing materials, they'll definitely focus on a lot of those, uh, the demographics, right? Who's your client, um, gender, um, age, family status, uh, you know, income status, other things. In sales, what we really focus on as well is we take all of that and we also ask ourselves two big questions. What are the fears of our clients and what are their goals and aspirations? Now, let's be very clear here. We probably don't need to focus on the fears too much because everyone's kind of feeling the same fear. But we should, we, we do want to focus on what their goals and aspirations are. Let's get them back into positive state. Um, as we go forward from that, understanding what their goals and aspirations are, we then create a powerful opener. So let's get started on that. Um, I am going to just skip a few of these slides because many of you guys have seen me or heard me before. Thank you so much. If you want to know more about, about myself, about our programs, um, at, at various points, I'm going to give you an opportunity to connect with us um, through booking links. I'm going to be posting, actually, I'll post my booking link up here right now. If at any time um, you're enjoying the conversation, you're enjoying the content, and you want to be able to connect further or talk about your business specifically, that is my personal booking link. Um, and we will get you started. We will help have a great conversation with you on how you can be able to use some of these strategies in your specific business. But let's talk about the elevator pitch to start off with. Because this is um, this is really about you know how how have we kind of gone on this journey for the elevator pitch, and when the elevator pitch first got started, this was really very much about the seller. And sometimes we even have people that still believe this way. They still like are only wanting to talk about themselves. Listen, I have a product you want. Do you want what I have? Because it's it's completely different. We do things differently, and usually that difference is usually we do it cheaper, right? We can do the exact same thing but for cheaper. We do that thing but we need cheaper. Do you want a website? We do it cheaper than everyone else. Do you want, I don't know, whatever it is, right? Toilet paper. We offer that cheaper than anyone else, like whatever it is, but it's all about the seller. It does not focus on the prospect. And then in the late 1990s, um, this, the, this new book came out at the time. It was called The Challenger. Challenger. And Challenger like revolutionized sales because Challenger talked about pain. Oh, we had to believe that our clients were in pain in some sort. So what we ended up focusing on was what is the pain that you're currently suffering from? Do you suffer from this pain? Because I have something that will help you relieve this. And this became huge for a lot of sellers. And you still see a lot of people that will talk about this. When they approach you, they will ask you, do you suffer from, right? Um, does your website not convert enough? Um, are you paying too much in fees? Um, have, you, have you struggled to communicate with your current vendor in a way that is meaningful, whatever it is. We talk about more of the pain, right? Are you afraid of this? This was also the, the phrase, what keeps you up at night was really brought around, right? What is that thing that is keeping you up at night? And this wasn't what it was about because as technology started to take over, Google started to change the way you would actually search for information. This now became much more future focused because when Google actually changed this, when you could actually change from it used to be boolean search you would actually put a word plus a word minus something else and it would like come up with search and then google said ask me a question and everyone was like 
what do you mean, Google? Like, what do you mean I can ask you a question? And now today, this is typically how we Google search, right? What is the fastest way? What is the cheapest way? How do I have this happen, right? How do I get more of this result? How do I achieve more clients? And, and oftentimes, this becomes much more optimistic, much more future focused. And so what we wanted to do is we wanted to create this, the goals, the aspirations. What are your clients and prospects goals? How do you help your clients and prospect achieve their goals faster. So I want you to think about this in a very meaningful way. When we think about our goal, when our client's goals, right? And one of the first things I, I always get people to do is start by creating a list of 100. 100 ideal clients, because hopefully most of you see yourself. Um, thank you so much, Edmonton. Awesome. You can, yeah, go ahead and use the chat. This is your guys' this webinar. I love it. Um, when we go ahead and we let people know where, where we're going to be able to help them, now they find this more meaningful. So one of the, one of your very first homework assignments that I want you to do like immediately today, maybe after today's webinar is to start articulating who are those 100 clients that you want to go after. Premium service providers know this. Transactional service providers don't care. They feel like they're throwing out dollar bills, right? Listen, I got what you have. I have brochures. I have brochures. I have brochures with price tags. And those are transactional sellers. Premium service providers were much sp more specific. We are laser focused and we're like, those are the clients I want. That's specifically who I want. And we will get so clear on this that we actually list out a list of 100. So that is your first thing. But out of that list, or if you're already working with a specific client, I want you to think of it this way. What is that specific client's goals? What do they want to achieve in the next six months, a year, no more than three years? It has to be something tangible. What do they want in their business, right? Why is that so important for them? So the relationship between, between the three of them is that we started off with the unique selling proposition, which was really about, you know, what is it that you do better than anyone else? This was, um, Jim Collins also called this the hedgehog in from good to great. You know, this is where you play. This is what you do really well. This is what the market needs. And in between that is what you do better than anyone else in the world. That's your unique selling proposition. The value proposition then took what you do better than anyone else in the world and quantified this. Not only do you, what do you do better than anyone else in the world, but what do you do better than at a certain level, right? So not only do we, do we uh, create the very best websites, but we end up creating websites that convert 20% of visitors, um, you know, that, that uh, go, get onto the website the very first time. That's quantifiable, right? Um, not only do we, do we help to create, create the very best engineering solutions for you, but we're also helping you to prevent yourself from, you know, costly uh, fees or any type of legalities that might come out by not having this prepared ahead of time, right? We're going to help you create something better. The elevator pitch really took all of this and ended up saying, okay, now take all of this and do it. At the time, it used to be less than 20 seconds. The history of the elevator pitch was that you would get it to the lobby, lobby you would press the button on, on the floor, and as the door was about to close, somebody would like, oh, wait, wait, and they would jump in the elevator, and it just happened to be like the big decision maker, the CEO of the company. And now you're in this elevator with them, and you literally have from the moment that they got on the elevator to the moment that they get off on their floor, 20 seconds to give what it is that you do better than anyone else and why they need to meet with you. Now, times have changed because let's be honest here, right? None of us really have 20 seconds to pay attention to anything. Does anyone know in the chat, you can go ahead and write it. Does anyone know what the average attention span of a person is nowadays? I'd love to hear you say this. Facebook has already figured this out and they've moved all of the, uh, oh my goodness, I love you guys. Facebook has already figured this out because they have an ideal video length that they want to, whenever you do Facebook ads, they have an ideal video length. I'm hearing everything from 20 seconds, three seconds, seven seconds, six seconds, five, five, seven, five. So the, uh, the, um, the answer that they figured out is actually seven seconds. Um, it's about six seconds or seven seconds, which is amazing because a goldfish has an attention span of, uh, of the same amount of time or slightly more than us, right? So, I mean, if our attention span is six seconds and a goldfish's attention span is seven seconds, and, um, and so now we have less attention spans than goldfish. So when we actually create videos, what they actually ask you is, can you create your message in seven seconds or less? 
I'm going to challenge you to do the exact same thing here today. So trial by fire. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to start you off somewhere and then we're going to break you. We're going to bring you back in here, but I'm going to, I'm going to partner you up here. We're going to move you guys all into breakout rooms at this point in time. And what I want you to do at, uh, for this for this challenge. Oh, some of you are already like scared. You're like, no, I don't want to practice this. <laughs> but what we're going to do is we're going to break you out into breakout rooms. And this is going to allow you to go ahead and just give me your first, give your group actually, your first elevator pitch all the way through. So we want to do, uh, we're going to have, oops, you're going to be assigned between four to five people per room. You're all going to jump in. I'm going to give you uh, five minutes of so one minute per person. Tell everybody what your current elevator pitch is or what is it that you say to people? If you are networking with somebody and somebody asked you, hi, Mary, hi, Dan, like, you know, what is it that you do? What is it that you're going to say to them? Okay. Is that fair? Is that clear? If you have any questions right now, now's your time to put this in the chat. Um, yeah, if you're unable to do this, go ahead. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'm like, where is the mute on this, right? So, so that was just a mini version of the breakout rooms um, as people are going to come back in. How was that? Apoorv, how did you like that? Did you get a chance to get some feedback? I did. Um, so, you know, it was kind of really quick. Uh, we popped in there and everyone um, did their elevator pitches. Yes. Uh, I don't know that we had very much of a chance to get uh, feedback on it, but it was a good okay. opportunity just to kind of try to deliver in front of a, a group for the first time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and I think for a lot of us, like, I mean, here's the irony is that despite the fact that we all know that we're going to go ahead and give our elevator pitch at some point in time. Um, we all sometimes will feel very caught off guard with the elevator pitch. Like, oh my goodness, now I'm on the spot. Now what do I say? And it should be something that we get very well practiced with. It should be something that we are very well rehearsed with um, as, we, as we go forward. So let's continue on then. Which brings us to, uh, so in the chat, I want you, we're back to our question here. What is the intention of our elevator pitch? Or what is the intention of that opener? Um, just in the chat, I want, you, I want to just put in there what you think should be the intention of, of what our conversation should be. What do we think that, like, you know, what, what are we hoping to get? Because here's the thing is that it shouldn't feel arbitrary. We shouldn't be just getting people to like, say like, yeah, you know, I, I, you know, I get what you do or, um, you know, well, I just give my, my elevator pitch. So I know people know who I am or what I have, have to offer. So we already have some great answers so far. Um, generate curiosity, incite a query, open a conversation, hook people into a story. I love it, Andrea. Um, you know, curiosity, create that conversation capture interest. Apoorv, how do you know somebody has captured interest just in the chat? Um, get people to be interested in what you offer. Christine, same question, right? How do you know people are interested in what you have? Um, a dialogue to continue on later. Get them to ask a question and keep going, says Dan. So that's, that's an interesting one because, I mean, if we don't know what we want people to do with that information, how do we know we've achieved it? And oftentimes many of you had created an answer. Just in the chat here, how many people created your elevator pitch as a question? All right, just go ahead and just say, I, I definitely did. Not me. Oh, oh, Caroline did. Yeah, well, Caroline, I expect nothing less than you, right? Nope, 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 not me, not me. I ended with a question. Okay, good, John, right? I have a question as a follow-up, says Dennis. Okay, ah, so here's the thing is if our intention then is to create conversation, right? I have thrown you the ball and I want you to throw the ball back to me. The only way I know that you're going to throw the ball back to me is because I have given you the proper response. Whereas if I place the ball on the ground, right? Which is oftentimes what a statement is. Here's the information that I have. What would you like to do with it? 
it can be very difficult for somebody to respond in the right way. So we want to be able to throw it out there and get to immediately to be thrown back. And that's what's going to really help us do that. The best way of doing that is to create it as a conversation. So when it comes to the elevator pitch, I want you to number one, stop talking about yourself. This is not about you. A lot of elevator pitches suck because they will typically start with I help or I work on, um, I, I, work, I work with clients that do this, I help people that are struggling with this, um, I, 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 I. It, if your elevator pitch starts off with the word I, we immediately need to change that because this isn't about you. Nobody cares. And because we now know that the attention span is about seven seconds long, my next question to you is like, why should I even give you an additional second? If it's going to take you 20 seconds to go through your entire elevator pitch, you are just going to inundate me with information that I may not actually want to deal with. So I use this analogy quite often, but when WestJet sells a vacation or wherever you are, Delta Vacations, Air Canada, United Airways, whatever whatever the, the airline of your choice is, um, hopefully none of you guys have chosen Spirit because I don't know why anyone would choose Spirit as their, their airline of choice. But that said, <laughs> whenever an airline goes ahead and tries to sell you a vacation, they focus you usually on two places. They focus you on why it sucks to be where you are right now. And we're not going to talk specifically about like the current situation, but realistically, like, you know, despite what's happening right now, outside of that, six weeks ago, we also didn't want to be where we were because we deserve to be somewhere better. And the next thing that they will typically show you is that wonderful beach, that wonderful location that you ultimately want to be. Why, how does that feel when you're there? And when you focus on, so let, let's take this for example. So Delta Vacations would focus you on Chicago in the middle of February and it is cold and it is freezing. And there is like this thing called freezing rain, which you're like, what in the world is this? Like, why is it snowing and it's freeze freezing? Um, you know, and then in the next scene, it's going to be, you know, they want to show you like the beaches of Cancun and you're like, oh, Chicago in February versus Cancun in February. I mean, what, like, why would you even think this is an option? Now, what would Delta sell? Go ahead and tell me in the chat, what do you think Delta sells you in that example? And to Christine's question, will the material be available? Yes, there will be parts of the material that will be available afterwards. We will have to cut out things because we are half of the sessions this week or today are actually gonna be built around the breakout sessions and practicing what we learn. Jeff says that they focus you on taking you. John says they sell you on an experience and what you feel like when you are there. Right? Um, what else do we have? You know, you guys are so quiet now. Also, oh, there we go. A cheap seat. Oh, Matt knows this one. Matt's seen my presentation, right? The experience, the destination, the destination that they read. John's seen this presentation. He knows what they do. Absolutely. What they do is they like what they actually sell is they sell you, they actually don't even sell you. They rent you a seat on a plane and they're like, here is your rental for the next six hours. Enjoy. And if anyone enjoy like actually did enjoy, unless you were flying in like Emirates and you're like actually sitting in like first class, you chances are you don't actually enjoy airline travel. You just want to be there as quickly as possible. Um, but what they do focus you on is the feeling, the emotion that you will be when you're already sitting on the beach on that vacation. And you're like, oh, that's actually what I want. Because here's the thing is that the moment Delta Airlines gets you to the Cancun airport, they wipe their hands clean. And they say, we no longer have to work with you. We no longer have, have to deal with you anymore because you're off our plane, you're done. But they focus you on where you will be after their service is done. The reason why you are so intent on paying to get to the Cancun airport is not because you're excited to get to the airport, but because you're excited to get to the beach, which is still another two miles away. And so that's where we want to focus you on. This is where you need to focus your clients on. So the biggest question, if you have a sheet and paper in front of you, I want you to write down what do your clients ultimately get when they use your services? 
I want you to think of this in terms of when my client is finished with my service, if you're a project basis, if my client is finished with my services, where will they be three months from now? And if it's not like that, if you're much more of an ongoing relationship, perhaps like you're more of a bookkeeper, an accountant, um, some type of maybe financial planner or something that's much more on a long-term basis, I want you to think to yourself, where will my clients be six months after they are consistently using my services? When they have used my services for six months, where will they ultimately be? And go ahead and in the chat right now, I want you to just put out a few different suggestions um, as we go forward. And like, let me know what, what is, what is your clients ultimately getting when they use your services? Because if we're aligning this to where, how Delta goes and ultimately gets you to the beach, I want you to think of it that way. So Salem says, you know, when my clients buy from us, they enjoy the benefit of the, of good after sales experience. Okay. So th that's fine. But that means what to them, right? When they're enjoying that benefit, what does that ultimately mean? Um, Carrie says more competent employees. Okay, that's great, Carrie. So more competent employees then ultimately means what? What does that ultimately do for their business? Um, Dar Dario says, you know, a long-term digital strategy for attracting higher revenues. Great, Jario, right? We're, we're ultimately getting higher revenues. And in terms of what, right? Does that mean in the same amount of time? Does that mean with, um, with the ability to grow and expand our business with more employees? Uh, oh, now you guys are all putting in the answers. This is fantastic. Emily, clear marketing strategy to result in increased sales and engage on it, which ultimately means to what? So you have increased sales. That's fantastic, Emily, right? An engaged audience, would, which would also mean something, right? Which means that, you know, allowing them easier to cross sell or allowing them easier to um, to be able to do something here's the bottom line is that we need to like usually and like and I say like this is like 95% of the time it needs to somehow relate back to let me help you make more money let me help you increase your profits or let me help you gain more clients which is ultimately like let me help you gain more money because the thing is is that most of us most of us don't want to just be in the status quo. We may be happy to be in status quo for a short period of time, but that is not our ultimate goal. Our ultimate goal is to be in status quo so that then we can achieve something else, right? And, and ultimately, we are, as humans, we are entrenched to want to achieve greatness. We are entrenched to want to do better. We want, we want more, we want more, we want more. And not more in a material way, but more in like Maslow's hierarchy way. I want, I want to be self-actualized. I want to help more people. I want to be able to affect more community. And if that's the more, how are you going to, how does your solution, it might not be, immediately, but one or two or three steps removed, how are you going to help them do this? This is about connecting the dots, three dots after your service and solution ends. Um, and thank you so much for the rest of you, right? Less employee app, app, and, app absenteeism, Gina, I'm like struggling with this word today, more productivity, yeah, more productivity, ultimately leading to, you know, hopefully like higher revenues, higher profitability, something else like this. Dennis says assurance that their teachers and counselors have tools. You guys are all fantastic. Thank you. And I am here um, as we, as we break into the, the next breakout session, I will be jumping from room to room, but we have a second here before we get to that point. So where I want you to start off with is in that value proposition. So remember when we saw that, that linear line, we started with the value, we started with the unique selling proposition, the value proposition, and then the elevator pitch. The value proposition is really a selling statement that allows someone to be clear on what we do. Most of you, actually, when I asked you for your elevator pitch, were actually giving me much more of a value proposition statement, um, whether it was quantified or not quantified, right? This is ultimately what I do. Um, it does it should focus on the solution, right? So think of if we're talking about Delta, um, Delta Airlines, it's not about that we, we make people travel, um, you know, far distances. That's definitely, you know, something that they do, but rather we allow them to, to get to the locations that they want to, to meet with family, friends, or, or new lo locals. That's what they do, right? Is that we take that person and we allow them to explore it. 
it should not mention the product or service because your product or service is agnostic, right? Ultimately, as a buyer, I want to achieve something more. And because of that, it is regardless whether I choose to do um, digital advertising or a brand new website, or I hire a balloon person to sit there and wave their arms in there. Those are all the outcomes that I want. Okay. Um, and Dennis says, yeah, this is where you ask probing questions. Absolutely. Right. So, no, and we'll talk, a, um, we'll talk a little bit about the pain portion, but rather the pain, I, I'm not a pain focused seller. Um, there's a lot of sellers out there or sales trainers that will very much like, what's the client's pain? What's the client's pain? I'm past this. Okay. Like, like, let's be very clear. I don't want to focus on pain I, uh, or focus on problems. I think that there's enough of that in the world. I want to help you achieve something more right? I want you to get there. So when you go ahead and you create your value proposition statement, you're going to start off by creating, you'll start with the who, right? Who is it that you're ultimately helping, right? Who is that ideal client? Because today we're in a very, you know, like shrunk down conversation and essentially I'm giving you module three of 10. Um, there was a couple of sessions before, uh, you know, uh, or uh, sorry, we do a couple of modules in KO sales. You even before this, where we really get clear about who our ideal client is, but for now you can either just, um, include this or just leave this portion out. Um, the next part is like, why would they need to change? What is the opportunity? If I stay in the status quo right now, if business continues to be business for now, what will this ultimately cost me? Now, I want us to be careful here because especially, let's be conscious of where we are in the time frame. This can be a very scary situation, but regardless of where we are today, if we were having this conversation six weeks ago, this can also be a very scary situation for a lot of businesses and a lot of individuals. This is, and this is usually the, um, this is the bankruptcy conversation, right? If I don't do anything to change, I'm going to be bankrupt. I'm going to be destitute. I'm going to be living out of my car and eating leftover McDonald's hamburgers, right? This is like the most terrible situation. This is fear induced. And the thing that we know about fear is fear is irrational and it is not illogical, yet people believe what they believe. Where I do want us to focus on is how will this ultimately allow you to improve? The questions you're going to ask yourself is what, right? What is that client suffering from? Why do they need to change now? How will their business improve? If you have your pen and paper in front of you, I want you just to respond to each one of those questions just very quickly. Um, and Jeff says, you know, can why, can why be, can why, why they, why you, they should discover the market from which I, why you'll have to describe that one just a little bit more, Jeff, um, why you, they should discover the market from which I'm not clear on what you're asking for. Um, but can it be like, like a, why, like why you like, why? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not clear, but <laughs> why they consider entering our market. Um, it could be why they should consider entering your market, but I want you to be much more future focused than that. Let's go with the assumption that they've already entered your market and instead what, like, what would they ultimately get in three months time or six months time? I don't like, if we're going back to the analogy of the airplane, I don't want you to think of them like why you should even consider airplane travel as a form of transportation, but rather, you know, how will you like, how will your business or how will your life be? different when you're already at the location where airline travel will get you to by asking someone to be like why you would consider to to um to be this solution is becomes very solution focused or sorry becomes very product focused and we want it to be much more solution focused what is the three dots that are happening after your product or service is complete so here's a couple silly examples uh, that we put together, right? So for the tired mother, you know, whose baby is up, wakes up at 3 a.m. for a feeding, right? So who it is, what, what is she suffering from? Instead of waiting for the water to boil in order to warm the formula, right? Why is, why change now? Because it's costing her precious sleep, right? She needs, she needs a solution right now. It's costing her precious sleep. Ultimately, she'll be able to heat up, well, like how will this, how will her life change? Because she'll be able to heat up the bottle per perfectly in less than 10 seconds, be back in her warm bed to get the rest that she desperately needs, right? Who, what, um, uh, who, what, why, and how? 
let's try silly example two, which is for some of us might not be that silly because they're like, this is exactly talking about my business, right? What you'll notice from this, sorry, from what you'll notice from a silly example number one is we don't talk about the product or the, uh, what we're, we're selling her. And it could be a lot of things. It's probably a bottle warmer in this case. But I don't say like, listen, you could have this bottle warmer because it's not about the bottle warmer. It's about what she will ultimately be able to do in her life because of that bottle warmer. Silly example number two, okay? So as your company grew from one to 10 employees, that's the who, the number of applications you were using also grew. So now that you're leading you to do, um, you know, or leading you to lose tasks, reduce your search time when you're only using four robust programs, allowing you to have consistency, efficiency, and more time serving your clients. Now that's the how. Okay. Now let's be very clear. I could be talking about a lot of things here. Yet again, I am not talking about the product or the service in the chat. If you want to go ahead, what do you think I might be selling in this silly example? Number two, what could be the, the solution that I'm trying to sell you? Because the point behind this is that it could be a lot of different things. It could be, you know, and I'll wait for you. Some of you. Oh, okay. There we go. So, Emily's like, it could be a software. I mean, Maybe I'm selling a software solution, right? Process solution, application integration, you know, a SaaS stack, right? Weekend seminar. Yeah, sure. Why not? An ERP. I love it because here's the thing is it's irrelevant what I'm trying to sell, right? There's an old movie called Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. It, it's irrelevant if I'm trying to sell you a ticket on a train, a plane, or an automobile. If ultimately, thank you, Emily. If ultimately we want to get you just to the destination, right? It's not about that, but for the client, this is their focus. Here's what I'm currently suffering from. Here's where I want to be. And we focus on those two ultimate solutions. Okay. So why don't we talk about product for those of you that still want to tell me about your product that you offer? Because you're creating a solution for the client. The, the client doesn't care how your product is. The other thing to be careful of is when we start to talk about solutions, we end up getting stuck in the solution trap. And what that means is that you will end up having people automatically associate you because other people I know do just the same thing as you do. So now I bucketed you into that situation. Or if your solution is still a little bit complicated, um, for some of you, you've been talking about, you know, um, uh, you, you, sorry. You, so for some of you, you've been talking about, you know, like, you know, inviting people to market, right? Whether we're talking about maybe cryptocurrency or a specific type of SaaS or something that might be maybe new to the market, or we're talking to somebody who has no concept of what this is. We can easily get so stuck into the details that we lose the giant picture about how this will ultimately help make your life better. So you want to think about what the solution is for the customer. The other thing is that your product or service is, um, sorry, it's not necessarily about what your, your, your product or service is not the solution. It's what the client will experience when they get from that. This isn't about just getting people to the Cancun airport. This is about getting them to the Cancun airport so that then they can ultimately get to the beach so that then they can be relieved. They can experience happiness. They can experience joy, whatever it is, but they want to be able to wake up. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, so, so, okay. So, and we will talk about this in a second, uh, Divya. She has gone ahead and asked me a question here about, can we talk about this in opening conversation? I, we will talk about this, but I, what, what the biggest thing is, is I still want you to be very focused on where your clients will be in September when they have already used your solutions, right? Or if somebody was to start with you today, where would they be by September? If, they, if someone was to start with you today, let's not focus about where they are right now, but rather where we want to be. People still want to talk about hope. They still want to talk about joy. They still want to talk about goals and aspirations and ambitions. And that is ultimately what your conversation will be. It's still about the wonderful beach that we ultimately want. Now, I want to be very clear. I, I do not want you to avoid the conversation if it comes up, right? Let's be compassionate 
quiet and empathetic. We're, most people are still experiencing fear at this current point in time, but let's not get so stuck about this and we don't have to preface anything going forward. But we're gonna walk before we run and I promise um, Divya, we're gonna, we're gonna address like how are we gonna experience this later, but let's get you to a place where number one, we can just see it assuming nothing is different right now. Let's just understand what that looks like first and then we can add in complications later. Okay, so stay with me. You're welcome. Absolutely. So, had I so I love this quote because this is about preparation. And in the the next week or two weeks that you have, I would much rather you spend the time preparing the conversation. If you feel ready to start contacting clients, great. And I I honestly I truly believe that right now is one of the best times to start creating those connections because people number one people are they they want to feel normal again, right? We want to have a sense of normalcy. We want to still be able to. To talk about where we want to be in our lives. And I mean, right now it's just about relationships. I'm not here to sell you. I am here to educate. I'm here to help. I am here to strategize with you. You would not believe how many people like right now, if your job is like to help people see new conversations, to strategize new ideas, be creative. Like you should be living your glory days right now. Yeah. Lynn, people are craving connection. Of course they are. Right. And if you're like, if part of your role is to help people like conceptualize and strategize like this is your time um yeah absolutely dennis right they're catching up on their to-do lists absolutely so this is a great time to start planning for when you are ready to have those conversations again uh, yay and andrea's like yes like andrea like this is your like this is your garden party like you should be enjoying like every moment that you have Okay, so your your elevator pitch, we're gonna talk about elevator pitch here right now, okay? It can be the beginning of emails, phone calls, and marketing materials. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you a an idea on how we can create elevator pitches, and then we're gonna separate you into breakout rooms again. And I want you to go ahead and practice this with, with your fellow students. And you're gonna go, you're going to go and give an idea. And please, um, when you give feedback as well, actually, we'll talk about that in a second here. I don't want to get too ahead of myself. But your elevator pitch will be the beginning of your emails, your phone calls, and marketing materials. You can use it in a wide variety of ways. We this is actually derived from Dan Pink's To Sell Is Human book. A fantastic book. Go ahead and check it out if you haven't read it yet. Um, but it should be something uh, compelling and said quickly. Now I'm gonna I'll limit you to 20 seconds for now. But ideally, you want to get to a point where you can say it into seven seconds. Can you can you say it quickly and can you get to the intention and the intention is to create conversation if i ask you a question your natural response to that question is to respond to that question is to give me an answer so that's typically what we want we should not mention product we should focus on the benefit and can you take that longer piece that you had written down your who what where are your sorry your who um your who what how and or why and how um and can you shorten that as we go forward okay so dan pink had a bunch of examples in terms of his elevator of hitch i've chosen the ones that i i like and i find most relevant is number one ask a question i'm a huge huge fan of asking question and if you ever take ko sales you which i will always recommend but if you ever take ko sales you the biggest thing we focus on more than anything else is asking powerful questions ask a question so for instance i believe it was ronald reagan that asked the question and he says like are you better off today than you were four years ago. And I think, and I, I apologize, I'm terrible with my American, um, you know, presidential history, but I think it was Jimmy Carter that was the president before that. And everyone was happy enough with Jimmy Carter. And they're like, ah, he's okay. And then Ronald Reagan's like, okay, but listen, are you better off than you were four years ago? And everyone's like, oh, oh, we actually should be better off. And that question alone was um, by a lot of the political pundits and the people that now um, study political history said that that question alone was the one that actually completely transformed the election because people think that they should always be better off, right? Let's live in that lit place. Like we should always be better off. Well, I was working with a outsourcing HR company and you know, one of the questions we asked them wasn't necessarily like, you know, we provide HR outsourcing solutions for your companies, but rather, how do you know when is the right time to hire HR services? 
I love this question because it's, it's genuinely interesting and curious. It's like, you know, if I'm asking a company that currently has four or five employees and they're telling me that they're in a position to grow, I would, the thing I would ask is like, when, how do you know it's going to be the right time is going to be when you want to outsource this, right? When will be the time that you're going to be looking for outsourcing solutions? Let's get people thinking about what might that look like as opposed to telling people what it is we do and then asking them to relate to this. Okay. Now, if you want to have fun, which I highly encourage, especially right now, okay, let's have a little bit of fun with things. Rhyming. Now, I love rhymes. Um, there's actually a lot of psychological research on this that actually says that if a phrase said in a rhyme versus a non-rhyme, it somehow rings more true when it's said as a rhyme, which is like, it's really funny. So, I mean, for, for some of you that might have remembered back in like, you know, we'll call it like the, uh, it was so, so nicely put as the trial of the century, um, the OJ Simpson trial, this was Johnny Cochran. And they, um, one of the things that they said ultimately got him off on acquittal was because he says, if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. And this was referring to the glove, right? If the glove is, if there was a benefit of a doubt, right? And so he made it wrong. It was the rhyme that stuck with the with the jury that was ended up being sequestered for days, and they just came kept coming back to this rhyme. It takes a licking, and uh, it takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Right? This was uh, for those of you that remember. This was Timex, right? And the funny thing about Timex was they actually created this back in the. 50s. They created it back in the 50s and it was actually had a resurgence in the um, the uh, cartoon, the animation movie, All Dogs Go to Heaven. And the dogs were like, it takes a lick and it keeps on ticking. And so like, you know, this whole generation of people that remember that saying, but Timex, like if you want, if you want people to literally remember your one call does it all. Yeah, Gina, I love it. Right. Please put in your rhymes, the ones that you remember, like, like there's so many of these little tiny rhymes um, that we remember. Now, if you can turn your entire company or what you do into a rhyme, think about how much fun that would be. Like, I mean, this is about like enjoying like life. Like let's, let's enjoy life. Let's have fun. Let's laugh with it. Um, a few other ones, if you really, if you can summarize it, you know, in one word, priceless, priceless is done by MasterCard, right? They had those commercials for a long time, right? For, you know, everything is like invaluable for everything else. It's like, you know, it's priceless, right? Uh, for everything else, or, you know, life is uh, priceless or whatever, for everything else, there's MasterCard, but they lived with this whole idea of priceless. And so anything that was priceless, like you'd have to have a MasterCard for it. And the other fun one is search. And most of us have already thought, oh, search, well, like who would own search? Well, of course, Google. I think Google probably now officially owns the word search. I'm sure they probably have some type of trademark on it. Um, but the thing about search was that was when back when uh, browsers, web browsers used to exist and you had like, you know, Yahoo and Ask Jeeves. And there was like, I think a hundred other ones. If you remember what your favorite web browser back in like, you know, the late nineties was like, please put it in there. Cause some of them had hilarious names, but Google ended up creating theirs. They were kind of late to the game in this. And they had a simple white uh, background and all it said was search Netscape. A few of you love Netscape, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, even, um, even, uh, you know, there's still Explorer out there. I there's a little meme out there that says, you know, if Explorer is bold enough to ask to be your default web browser, right, you're bold enough to make the phone call, right? <laughs> it's like, you know, they'd still ask AOL, yeah, you know, but uh, Google had the, had the one, um, the one simple white background and all it said was search. And the, when they were doing original user studies, they would sit there and they'd watch these people sit in front of the screen for like five minutes. And finally, they said after five minutes, they would come up to these users and like, sorry, what are you waiting for? And they're like, we're waiting for the rest of the page to load. Because back then, the pages were like so like ad heavy and bad background. And Google's just like, we want you to do one thing. All we want you to do is search. These, like that was like the epitome of giving one, like a person one single call to action, one single call to action. Okay. Email subject lines. So for those of you that aren't feeling comfortable, um, you know, calling people um, during this time, you can also use your elevator pitch as an email subject line, but it should drive curiosity, use the benefit and be specific. Play around with it. If you can create something that is fun, it will still create open. Now, 
as much as possible, ask yourself, where do I want my client to be in September? Where do I want them to be in December? And ask yourself, like, what, what do you hope for them? What will you wish upon them? And be a little bit more future focused right now. All right. Be more, more hopeful, optimistic, positive. We, we all crave it right now. Um, but the best formula, the simplest way. And then finally, Twitter. Um, I'm a big, big fan of Twitter. If you, if you follow me on Twitter, um, you might not actually enjoy it. I retweet a lot of, uh, <laughs> I retweet a lot of stuff. Um, so probably don't join me on Twitter, but I love Twitter because it forces you to be concise all the way through 140 characters or like now it's 280 characters. And they say bonus of done in a haiku. Haikus are interesting because they're the Japanese um, of poetry that was five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables long. And it has a sing song to it, right? Sing song, sing song. Um, if you could only even do it in five syllables, that's amazing. A thousand songs in your pocket. I love this one. This was iPod when it first came out. iPod was also very late to the MP3 player game. Um, but what they did was they were they were small and it was two gigabytes. It was essentially what it was. Two gigabytes doesn't really have the sing, uh, sing song rhythm to it. But the other thing was nobody had a concept of what two gigabytes actually meant and so ipod said okay how do we how do we conceptualize this in a way that is meaningful for our for our users so we'll call it a thousand songs in your pocket this doesn't didn't mean that people were would automatically return their ipods because it only fit 983 songs in there it just had an idea behind it and then finally, get to where you're going. Someone else is driving you cheaper than a cab. I mean, this could be Uber or Lyft or something, but it has that you can hear the sing song as we go through it. All right. So those are a few examples of how I want you to take your elevator pitch. And I want you to go ahead and recreate it into a, and we'll go through these just one more time. So write it down if you need to, into either a, question, I highly recommend you at least turn it into a question. How do you do what you're doing? Focus on the result. Focus on what you want your client to feel and then turn it into a question. Okay. Maybe you want to do a rhyme for now. Go ahead and create a rhyme. Can you do it in one word? Can you create an email subject line? For today, I recommend you leave the email subject line for now. It might be something that you might want to practice after today's training, but if you feel more comfortable with it, go ahead and use it. Um, also, email subject lines, um, they, they do recommend that your email subject line is actually five words. Um, on average, five words is kind of the, the highest open rates for email subject lines. So additional challenge for you. Or a Twitter. If you want to do it as more of a haiku or 140 characters, chances are if you're going to do one of these other ones, though, um, as the ask a question or rhyming, you're probably going to fit into that as well. Okay. If you have any last questions, I will, I will take them in the group chat. The, the assignment here will be to go ahead and you're going to be paired up. I want you to, to go ahead, give everybody, let people know who you are, where you're calling from, what maybe what your business is. But I want you to even start off even just with your elevator pitch, this brand new elevator pitch now. As feedback for those that are participating, I want you to tell the person what you liked, first of all, what you liked about what they did, and one suggestion on how they could make it better. Right? This is about helping to increase everyone's skills going forward. Don't forget you will be assigned to the breakout room. You have to join the breakout room um, and then you'll be put in there. I will give you, let's say, let's give you 15, we'll do 20 minutes. We'll do 20 minutes in total, um, which in a group of four, that gives you about like a minute or so to, to do your elevator pitch and about three or four minutes to get feedback from every person. And then the next person will go and the next person goes. Yeah, that's okay. If you have to go, don't even worry about it. Um, and, uh, you know, and if you can join, this is great. But right now we are going ahead and we are going to go and assign you. If you have any other questions, just let me know. Let's get this out of here. Goodness, thank you. Everyone loves, yeah, everyone loves the breakout rooms. Thank you. Some of you were in smaller rooms um, and then I kind of pushed you into other rooms um, as we went, as we went forward, but I hope that you were able to, to work on, work on your solutions. We're going to continue on for this because we're only uh, an hour and a half into this amazing, um, 
<laughs> this amazing like marathon sales training session. But thank you. I, I'm glad you enjoy the breakout rooms. Uh, the rooms that I was in, they were they were very good feedback. Um, there was a lot of help. Um, you know, people were saying like, "This is how I would reply." This is like, you know, it didn't really resonate with me. Um, here's a couple goals that I want to see from you. If you are forming yours in a form of a question, number one, can you turn it into an open-ended question. So I know that there's many of you that are in, um, in KO Sales U formally. There's a few graduates. There's a few KO Sales U online. We've covered this or we will be covering that. For those of you that aren't, um, please feel free to, to reach out um, as well. Again, I'm going to go ahead and just put my meeting link as well in here for those of you that haven't had an opportunity to, um, to connect with me personally. Um, but an open-ended question is essentially, you know, who, what, where, when, how, or why. And the reason why we like to have open-ended questions is because it forces somebody to give us much more of a response or a statement as an answer. Close-ended questions will typically start along lines of like, are you, could you, would you, should you, do you? Um, if you had this, like, you know, would this be valuable, right? You know, if you had a solution to meet all your needs, would you find that valuable? valuable. And I just came in from a room where that was kind of the question. He goes, I'm not, he's, and I said, how did you like your question? He's like, I'm not a fan of it. And I said, why? And he's like, well, cause it just doesn't feel right. And I said, the reason why it doesn't feel right is because we force somebody to essentially say, yes, I would find that valuable. And now because they found that valuable, does that mean that they're an ideal client for you? <laughs> Probably not, right? I mean, that's, um, that doesn't have, like, you know, just because somebody has admitted yes to something doesn't mean that they're an ideal fit for the solution. So the idea is to kind of bring them back into like understanding where the information was. Um, I want to call out Carrie. Um, Carrie, are you still, are you still in here? She had the, she was dealing with um, people, yeah, in, uh, I'm here. professional the cops. <laughs> yep, that's me. Yeah. Yeah. Carrie, Carrie, <laughs> I wanted to call you out because we kind of worked on your question a little bit. Um, how did we evolve with your question? Um, so I, we were talking about how to improve law enforcement training. Um, and so at first we were talking about sort of the liability um, and the importance of training and how do we bring that out? So um, we started with um, who has had um, an oh shit moment on the job where they've shown up and not known what to do. Uh, and then we evolved the question to what was your most memorable oh shit moment, uh, which is when they have to respond to something and they don't know what to do. And it's usually because their training um, was insufficient somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so where, like, how did, how did your, your question like shorten and evolve to? Uh, that was as far as I got was what was your most memorable oh shit moment. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Daryl's I, laughing. I love it. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> He's like, I think I just want to use it on my daily life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it speaks I, to my audience. <laughs> it, well, it, it does. So, so, okay. So, um, so Divya asked a great question um, privately to me. She's like, you know, can we, can we address like, you know, what things are happening in light of the situation? Carrie, I love your question because it, it makes people laugh. It catches them off guard, right? Um, there's actually, there was some new research that came out about two months ago talking about the role that swearing has in, in a sales cycle and how swearing can actually help improve your clothes, your closability of your, your sales cycles uh, within reason. Okay. So let's, yeah. <laughs> we, we don't need to turn into pirates. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, I have to be careful too, because um, law enforcement is an area uh, that is used uh, traditionally used a lot of swearing and they're yes. trying to get away from that um, more public service uh, so uh, we have to use it uh, sparingly now because we're trying to um, pull law enforcement into a more professional environment uh, yes. so we're trying to get them to swear a little bit less <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah. It, uh, in the realm of swearing I think the oh shit moment uh, still works 
Yeah. And uh, well, and um, so, so I mean, feel free to swear from time. To, but the other reason I wanted to call out your, um, your question specifically was because even when you said it, it kind of made people laugh a little bit and, and humor can be a very valuable thing, um, especially, especially right now. Right. And you can, you can easily enjoy, you know, funny stories and, you know, and I mean, it might get into a serious point, but the other thing is, I mean, you never know, like, you know, now when things pass, it becomes funny you know, and, and that's, that's the nice light of the situation. Um, Jezza, when he was in my class, he had a great question, uh, or when I was in, um, in the, uh, the, uh, breakout room, he says, well, how would I even use this? Like, you know, now that I'm creating this, how would I even use this? So this is a great question. Um, and we are, we're going to, you know, a little bit later, we're going to, as we, we're going to wrap up this one fairly shortly, we're going to take a little bit of a break. And then we're going to talk about specifically reaching out through phone calls, emails, and other types of intentions. Um, but the reason why I want to get you really clear on this is because there is a lot of places that you can use. And the recommendation I'm going to make um, today is different than the recommendation I would have made three weeks ago. Okay. So let's be very clear on this, but how could you use, if you create like a really cool, um, you know, rhyme or phrase or anything, you could use it in a tagline for now. Um, perhaps headlines for blog posts, your website cards, email signatures. Um, but you know, think about this in terms of like either networking introductions, even if we're not able to actually be physically around people right now, um, you know, maybe you can go ahead and like, if you were part of a Slack channel or a Facebook group or something, maybe post that as a status or as a, as a conversation starter for people, you know, so that you're able to at least create those connections. Another way of being able to do that is if you've created your list of 100, uh, you know, those hundred ideal clients that you want to go through. And if you haven't done this, please connect with me further. I can go through, um, I have my meeting link in there, connect with me, let's have a conversation because I can help you work through this. But if you go ahead and you're now connecting with people online, right? Perhaps you're introducing yourself on LinkedIn. That could be a good question to actually ask as part of your LinkedIn connection request. Now in, a th like I said, you know, other three weeks ago, I would have made a recommendation that literally you would get on a phone with somebody and you would start to call or like use that, that, um, question essentially as your starter to your conversation. I want to be very clear here today. I don't know if that's completely appropriate. We need to create a little bit more empathy and compassion, but it's okay because if your question, if when you ask your question, the ultimate like feeling I want you to have is like, you know what, this person should like, I should, I feel like I'm actually genuinely interested in just that response. I'm interested in just genuinely finding out like what frustrates you most about, you know, work travel. What frust like when was the last time you had that holy shit moment? Um, what is the thing you want people to say after, you know, they've attended your event? Um, you know, what other, what other non-alcoholic options do you, or what option, what non-alcoholic options do you provide at your events? You know, those are genuinely interesting conversation starters. Like I am genuinely interested in hearing that that response and then from there we can have a greater conversation if you have any questions on that go ahead and put um put that in the chat but i also want to hear for so actually i'll just pause here for a second don't write your answer yet you can go ahead and have it ready 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 um if there's any questions here okay so then in the chat right now i would love to hear what was one thing you took away from from this first hour and a half today right what's one thing that you you're you're learning if if the maybe the one thing you took away with was your question your elevator pitch question go ahead and just write that in there right like let's let's hear it out um i want to hear from you uh what is this why why do, does this change today as opposed to oh yeah good question okay so why does this change today as opposed to three weeks ago um i think right now we just we need to as much as i believe that we need to we always need to enter every conversation with empathy and, um, and compassion right now um because there is um a heaviness I want to make sure that we are addressing the emotional intelligence first before we go ahead. So when we're in, um, when, when, when we do KO sales, you in module seven, one of the things we talk about is active, no, sorry, in module 
module six, um, we talk about storytelling and emotional intelligence. And one of the things that, um, that we specifically address on is understanding the emotional state first, attaching empathy first before we get into to active listening. And then actually rapport comes actually, rapport is actually one of the last things that we typically build. Um, because if you're in a first time connection status, um, if you're phoning someone, okay, phoning specifically, because we're in a first time connection status, uh, we need to be really cognizant of the emotional connection first before we start to get into the questions. So you can still ask people, how are you feeling? I'm a huge believer in asking people not how are you doing? How are you doing as a rhetorical question? How are you feeling? does a check-in. It does a, a real quick check-in and we can still answer the same way as I'm, I'm feeling fine, but rather this is about like, I feel good. Okay, great. Now we can go ahead and ask the question. It is critical to make sure that you are very cognizant about emotional state first before we go, we go further. Um, Gina, she loves the, um, all about the rhyming pitches. Um, Dan says, you know, how much focus and important are you putting into the durability? Oh, I like that. Right. Um, see Dan, my, my recommendation, see if you can Drink that um, five words. See if you can do it in five words, right? If you can get down to five or seven, um, I would love to see that. Um, uh, let's see, I keep forgetting to lead with a question. This is a regular problem for me. Thanks for bringing, oh, you're welcome, AJ. I appreciate that. Um, what did everyone else get away from today, right? Just at least for this first part. And then we're gonna go, we're gonna take a quick little break here. Um, leading with open-ended questions, um, asking a good open-ended question. Yeah, oh, Rick, I love it. Like, let's let's be genuinely curious. Oh, great feedback from others, says Dan. Oh, I love it. Uh, sorry, Doug, um, starting with an I. Yeah, Carrie, good job, right? And oh, open-ended questions. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. Uh, don't corner them. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't force them to say yes. And then you're like, oh, that's fantastic. Now you're my ideal client. Um, yeah. John Lucen. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So we're, we're going to take a quick break here. Um, I'm going to put the timer up on the screen. Um, even myself, I need to grab a water. Um, and everything. And I will be back here. If you have any questions for me, you can go ahead and just ask them privately. Um, it is currently, we're going to take a five minute break here and then we're going to come back and we're going to, to work on how do we now approach more people with this? Okay. Um, oh, all right, all right, all right. Welcome back, everyone. Hope you had your quick little break and everything. We are back. I did get a couple questions from people um, during uh, during part of the break, so let me just address those right now. Um, so, uh, one person asked me, "Was there discussions on whether to reach out with people versus call versus email?" We're actually going to be discussing that one right now. So you're in luck. Um, let's see. Dan's good takeaway was how important important is it for for your business to be more durable um good dan you're getting closer you're getting, i'm, I'm going to continue to challenge you dan um because of course it's really important for my business to be more durable so maybe the question is you know in uh like how would your business like how could you make your business more durable um it, now be careful with the word durable unless it's very industry specific it might not like somebody might question you and be like well what do you mean by more durability um so so see if you can get even more specific with that um, because we like I want to know like I'm, I'm genuinely curious now a question I received um, during the break which was uh, you know is, is it appropriate right now um, you know, they, the person said that they were doing some prospecting um, over like on Friday and the, like the, what they were essentially getting from people was, listen, it's just not the, not the right time right now and everything. Okay. So, so let's be very clear. All right. What I do not think is appropriate right now is I don't think it's appropriate to go ahead and just try to sell right now. But here's the thing is I never really thought that was appropriate. <laughs> okay. Um, I hate people that come like as the sales trainer, what do you mean you hate people that try to sell you stuff? Um, because I don't like without knowing who I am or what, what is about, uh, what is about me. It's now what something might've been very just tasteful has now come across as actually just very like not very specific. Um, Dan says, build relationships, not proposals. Yeah, Dan, have you read my book, Dan? Um, I'm going to, uh, here, I'm going to put it in the chat here as well. Um, so that uh, if you haven't had a chance to download the book, um, you can actually get my whole book for free. Sell more faster book. 
There you go. So there's a form, you fill out the form, you're going to get to, oh, well, thank you, Andrea. I appreciate that. Um, so what is, what ought, like is the intention here? Okay. So let's, let's set our expectations correctly. Okay. Our expectations should maybe not get into a sit like a necessary, like a full on sales cycle. That is a bonus. If that happens, what the intention is, is to either a figure like, you know, actually like spend a little bit more time understanding our clients. And yes, that will be a meeting, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be a sales meeting. It's just like, listen, like, you know, I've been, I've been doing a lot of research on your company and with everything shut down, I would love to just know a little bit more about your goals and where you're going. And when the time is right for us to meet again, I would like by knowing that I'd be happy to have a further conversation. Honestly, like that is as honest and open as transparent as I could possibly get, right? I would love, like, I would love for you one day to be my client right now might not be the right time, but I would love to spend a little bit more time just understanding, you know, what are your goals for your business this year? And where do you want to take it to? Now, the funny thing is, is that actually a lot of people are probably going to respond very positively about that because they want to talk about something else. And they want to talk about something that is very future focused. Um, the, the other thing is, is that in the event that you're able to get a meeting, right. And the person's like, this isn't really appropriate right now. And you could be like, listen, I couldn't agree more. What I do know is that this too shall pass. Is it possible for us to get a meeting in two weeks or three weeks time? Um, and we could book it for zoom right now. If in the event that we're not able to actually be face to face or something, um, a meeting in the calendar, even if it's a month or two months off is better than having no meeting in the calendar. But be very like compassionate at this point in time. Right now, I want you just to know a little bit more about their business, about their goals, about what they want. What help do you need right now? Now, I be careful with this question because it, it's appropriate if you're calling on current clients or former clients, just to, like touch base with them. Part of your sales cycle is actually like doing the follow-up and the cross-selling, like touching base with people that you've already worked with. What help do you need right now? Lovely question to ask because people already know who you are. They already know how you may be able to help them. Um, in a brand new situation, that's not entirely right. Because if I don't know who, um, let me just call it some names here. If I don't know who, who Dario or Rob or Michael do or who they are answering a question, like what help do I need right now? I have no answer, right? I don't know. I can't tell you what kind of help I need. Um, but remember, this is about, you know, how do we connect with like, you know, I would just love to know a little bit more about your company. What are some of the goals that you have right now? Be very future focused, right? Where do you want, like, where do you want your business to be? When, when everybody does come back to work, what are some of the things that you, um, you know, or in the event, like if none of this happened, what were some of the things that you were focusing on? Right. And how is that going to play into the future? Right. I just, I literally just want to know about you. Um, the other thing is you're never going to please 100% of the people. 100% of the time. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. So, so in your sales cycle, in your sales funnel that you're essentially um, going to see, um, this is, uh, this is really about, you know, we're kind of in two points here, right? Number one, um, we talked a little bit in that suspect prospect side. So this is your ideal time. This is like perfect time to like strategize, plan, prepare, connect with people. Um, Dennis in his case said like, listen, like I sell to, to schools and teachers and all the schools and the teachers are closed. Um, so that's fine, right? You're probably not going to get a hold of them. You might, you're going to have to probably default to email. Um, if you do want to get in touch with people. Otherwise spend this time preparing, right? Who is it that I want to get in front of? Who are those people that I can connect with? Can I connect with them in other methods, such as LinkedIn, such as uh, community groups, such as maybe a Facebook, you know, group or something like, where are these people? Um, yeah, Tara, you can't please everyone. Absolutely. Um, I promise you, I, I say this um, for those of you that heard this, I said, if I had the, the perfect thing to say to make 100% of the people pick up and give you the meeting and 100% of those people could close, I would likely be a millionaire and I wouldn't have like a sheet dripped behind me while I'm like sequestered in my basement. Okay. <laughs> I promise you, I wouldn't be in this situation. Right. I would like, I would be in some like, uh, I'd be on my yacht. Okay. <laughs> Let's just be clear with that. Um, so, so we're going to be focusing on the suspect prospect side of it. I, I encourage you 
reach out. Okay. There is never going to be a perfect time to reach out. So just go ahead. And if you're, if you come from the intention of, I want to know more about you, I want to just know about your goals. I want to like maybe help you get there closer. Right. Or at least when I understand them, let me, let me help, like, you know, just do some uncovering. Let me see if there's anyone I can put in my network. Once I know where you want to be, product or service aside, when I know where you want to be, I'm more likely to be able to help you in the future. Um, oh, uh, Daryl, one question, people reaching out on personal accounts or business accounts. Um, I do my personal account. I'm just like, this is who I am. My, my business and my personal are so intertwined. My business has its own personality and my myself, I have my own personality, but I want people to know that you're reaching out to me. Like we're, we're people, right? And I am like, I'm here to provide value. But your intention here is to get the meeting. So get the meeting on the phone, get the meeting in, on the Zoom, get the meeting in a month's time where you can and if appropriate. But if you don't try, the answers already know. Okay. So let's, you know, but, you know, I mean, don't be like, I, I don't want you to feel like this is like, you know, Kim's telling me that I need to like look and like try to like, you know, get every single sale. That's not what this intention is. This is about helping to create relationship and community first and foremost. Plus you guys are all like premium service providers. Okay. And the one thing about premium service providers is that like, we're calm. We're like, we're patient. Like, like this is like, this is our thriving time while everyone else is sitting out there. Like, I don't know what I'm going to kill and eat. Right. We're sitting here. We're like, Oh, this is our glory because we actually get to like approach people and we get to be calm and we get to be patient. And this is how we should be approaching it. The other time you might want to reach out is right at the end. So then this follow up and referral, right? Which is what I said. If you have current clients, former clients, anything else like this, how can I help you? What help do you need? Um, you know, who would you like me to put you in touch with, right? F figure out ways that you can create community, even in virtual environments. Like even here today, I mean, we have right now we had 40 people. I think at the top of the hour, we had, you know, 55 or something. I think we had like 160 people register for this, which was like overwhelmingly amazing. So thank you. Okay. So if in lieu of booking meetings or no, not necessarily in lieu of, I want to, uh, so no matter what, okay. No matter what you need to do your research on your clients. Okay. Premium service providers get this. We know this. We know we would spend like two hours researching somebody in order to make a 10 minute phone call. Like this is just how it is. I want to know as much as I possibly can about this person. I want to put myself in their shoes first and foremost, and then I will go in a, and approach them. So great. Com uh, so, uh, when, when we talk about connections, this is usually based on a commonality of some sort, right? What can you find in agreement with, right? What can you find rapport on? Most of the time, no matter what, all like almost every single one of our clients are still thinking about how am I growing my business? Now, if you have, if you're working with people and their biggest thing is like, how am I going to survive right now? It might not be the right conversation. How much research do you reveal to the client? let them all know it. Right. Like, I mean, unless you've like actually like gone and like scraped their like private Facebook page, that might be a little bit on the creep scale, but if you are researching them on their LinkedIn and you've done their website and everything like, yeah, I should, like I've had people who are like, I like know this and this. I'm like, wow. I'm like, you've done your research on me. Like that's, that's actually really impressive. I've never like called, like somebody's never called me and done their research. And I'm like, oh my goodness, who is this creep? Like I've never reacted that way. Um, uh, yeah. Right. I don't mind it as long as you don't hit me with a scathe. Yeah. You, like, I mean, this is about creating a relationship. Okay. And remember yet again, we talked about this in the last hour. This isn't about your product or service. This is about solutions, right? You know, what, what is the thing that we want to help solve for? Um, and this is really about like, how are we going to help you grow? Right. Right now, most people are probably thinking, how am I going to continue to grow? How am I going to continue? Um, you know, they might be in survival mode and and that is fine. Right. Just be like, listen, like I get like, you know, I hear that you're very scared right now. Right. You know how, like, you know, like I'm here to listen, like realistically, how can I help you as we go forward? Okay. 
So one of the, I told you um, in KO Sales U, one of the things that we do focus on is the buyer persona, right? Buyer persona is also known as the customer avatar or ideal client. Um, it can be a few different things. But at the end of the day, this is really about, you know, um, understanding who our client is. And marketing will typically, this is one of the few areas where marketing and sales kind of overlap a little bit. But marketing is really looking from the buyer persona as like a group, like, you know, who are who's that massive, like, you know, hundreds, thousands of people that we want to go after and how do we bring them inside here? So the buyer persona can be an individual or a person inside a company. So think of this as, let's say you're dealing with a mid or an enterprise level kind of company. The buyer persona might be the procurement, the procurement manager inside a giant tech company, right? So the tech company is a buyer persona. And then you have the, the actual procurement person inside that tech company. So there's going to be a little bit of two different buyer personas. Personas. The reasons why we want two different buyer personas is because the tech company in general will be very focused on, you know, revenue or some type of bottom line metric or something else like this. Whereas the individual inside that company is going to be much more personally motivated, right? The reasons why they want to, to um, approve or, you know, disqualify certain purchasing decisions is because part of my job description is to reduce operating spend by 2%. And if I do do that, I ultimately hit my bonus. So despite the fact that you might have the right solution and you are the best provider, if we're not helping to personally motivate someone to take action, they're not going to do it. And the other thing is that let's say we're dealing with maybe a smaller or mid-sized company and we're actually the, the main person, the decision maker who's going to be making that decision is like the CEO, the founder, president of the company. The personal motivation, the company, they still have a very like, you know, revenue or sales metric. They might be appealing to a board of directors or investors or something else like that. So we have to be able to show the numbers, but personally motivation, the reason why I want this to succeed is because this is part of my legacy. This is is, you know, this is greater than me. I want to, uh, my dream was to start this company so I could eventually sell it and create uh, philanthropic endeavors, right? You know, that's where I want to dream. If we can appeal to that personal motivation as much as we can to the logical motivation, then we've created magic. Okay. So we want to be able to actually create a very specific demographic. The difference between the two, so your buyer persona is going to be a very specific person, a very specific business, and your target audience is going to be that group of people, right? This is also going to help you to find new personas. Ah, this is great, right? Because you know, one of the questions we could typically ask somebody is like, listen, what, what is the networking event that you're missing out on the most? Like, why is that not a genuine question? Like, that is a fair question to ask somebody in this time, because it's about creating relationship. It's about understanding understanding where they're getting their sources of information. Why do you like that type of networking group, right? One of the things I'm looking at is, you know, as we kind of create this, how do we create something online? What was, what was your favorite, um, you know, trade show or association events that you would like to go to, right? That is a great thing to find out what was valuable about them, right? What do you miss about them? We're, I'm just asking them genuine questions. It might not seem like it's very specific to my business and it might not be. But one of the things like, at least in my business is I'm a big believer in creating community and creating tribe. And by understanding this person and where they're coming from, I can then help them understand that, right? How does that group help you achieve your goals or how are they helping you build, you know, a strategy to help you achieve that, that organizational um, endeavor, whatever that is, because now we're focused on a bigger picture, bigger, bigger than you, bigger than them, bigger altogether. So there's certain things that you're going to find out in your, in your buyer persona. For those of you that are um, going to be a part of KO Sales U or on KO Sales U online or your graduates, you know the sheet. Um, this is a module two when we had to fill out your buyer persona information. Uh, for those of you that are informal students um, of our program, this is some of the things that we actually get you to, to outline. Age, gender, marital and family status, location, occupation and role. Some of this stuff might seem irrelevant but actually is not, especially when we understand somebody is personally motivated. As a family person, one of my personal motivations is to ensure that I'm there for my family. And if you can touch in how your solution is going to allow me to have more time to spend with my three-year-old son, 
okay, I'm going to listen. Like, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, if you're going to help to show me how, you know, my brand is going to be able to be seen in front of even more audiences. Okay. I'm going to listen, right? Whatever that is. Um, the other thing you need to understand is what are like the biggest things, emotions, right? What are their fears? What are their goals and ambitions, right? What are they really afraid of? And like, you know, and it's not about the fact that we're not going to like, you know, like ignore the fear, but you know, just understand that it's there, right? The reality is most people are afraid of going completely bankrupt, of losing their businesses, of losing their companies. And that's fine. Like, I mean, fear is irrational and it's, it's not logical, but it, it feels real. The other thing is that beyond this, there's something more that we want, right? Hopefully the client's goals and aspirations are not to, I just like my goal and aspiration is just to survive. If that's their goal and aspiration, I, I would actually see that as a red flag. And I would probably walk away from that client because I'd be like, listen, if your goal is just to survive, that's probably not very future focused. Or if that's future focused, like that's a terrible future. That's very bleak. Whereas a lot of us, like our goals are like, we still want to grow. We still want to like improve our client bases. We're actually looking at things more creatively than before. Fantastic. Right. Because that means like, okay, like what kind of things have you thought of in the past? Right. Where are you like, where are you planning on spending your, your, your limited resources? Or if there was one thing you could change in your business today, what would that one thing be? I want to know, like, I genuinely want to know because then that allows me to say, okay, how do we problem solve? How we do, how now do we help you as we go through this? Um, Gina had a question in here, right? What if you are B2B? Yes, Gina, absolutely. So, I mean, because we're talking, because you're still talking with someone specific, you need to understand what is that person's personal motivations. As an example of this, um, we recently brought on a, um, a financial institution uh, head office in Maryland. And, um, and so they, they joined our, our program. And so I, I knew the company, I knew what they were wanting to get, but I also knew as the sales director, who was the, the decision maker in this case, um, I knew that he needed this program to look really good because he wanted to ultimately be seen as a better figure in front of the investors, right? Some of the things that he wanted, there was a lot of pride. There was a lot of, um, you know, like, like um, pride, let's just call it pride, right? There's a lot of pride associated with, I don't want to call it ego necessarily, but he had to see this work. And so I had to tap into that. And I had to make him feel that this was, this was not going to fail for him, that no matter what it was going to succeed. So knowing who, who he was and what, what he was concerned with, I could then go ahead and tap. As we go through KO Sales U, one of the things we do tap on is the differences between the influencer and the decision maker. And you need to know what the personal motivations are of each one and ensure that you're appealing to the conversation. Um, John says, are you recommending filling out this out for specific individuals, not just specific roles? So John, yes, I would love to see you like not, you doesn't have to be for every single person. Start with one, start with that ideal client, that client that you're already working with that you're like, I want more of that. And then let's just figure out that one first. Now, if you don't have any clients, um, or any clients in a very specific space, think of yourself as like, who is that person? I do not want you to think of this as too big. Marketing is very big and very broad, right? Who in this net can follow into this? Sales is like, who do I want to specifically talk to, right? Who is John, right? And I want to think about John specifically. And if I can practice thinking about John, I'm better well practice at thinking of all the other individuals that I'll eventually connect with. Um, yeah. Okay. And thank you, Emily, for your response to, to Gina's. I appreciate that. So some of the things that you can do for research for your, um, for your calls as well. So if you're, if the companies that you typically work with are publicly traded or are, um, are public um, institutions, um, find out if you can find like the letter to shareholders or management discussion and analysis. Um, I, when I worked for American Express, one of my favorite pieces of content to read for any of my clients was the management discussion and analysis. It's typically a three to four page document that actually precedes seeds the annual report. So if you ever download a company's annual report, um, it will be three to four pages um, associated in that. 
And then you can read that. And that's usually, it's very future focused. It talks to you about the challenges that the company is planning on overcoming and the things they want to focus on. Like if you want to talk about understanding where a client is coming from, like this is it, right? Understanding what that potentially looks like. Management discussion is oftentimes, be careful, it's rose colored, it's tinted, right? Because it's written for the shareholders. Here's the challenges that we see. Here's all the things that we're going to do to overcome it. And look at how amazing amazing we are, right? Um, if you ever took like business, um, this was sometimes like considered the SWOT analysis, right? Your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Essentially, the management discussion analysis really encompasses that whole, their whole SWOT analysis, um, but in a very positive and optimistic way. We want investors to believe that we're able to overcome whatever solutions that we have. You can also check out the company website, um, but be careful. Oftentimes, websites are more outdated than social media profiles. Social media profiles will also have some great information as well. But the biggest question I want you to ask yourself is besides this, right? What else is the company's biggest challenge, right? What are they going to have to overcome? Or maybe thinking in future of, right? When things come, like when they come back to work in two weeks or three weeks time, what is the biggest challenge facing them? Maybe it is right now, right? Right now is a great opportunity. Not that I want to think about like, is this your challenge? I don't want us to go down that path, but rather how, if you were that company and that was your challenge, what are some of the creative ways that you're thinking of overcoming that specific challenge? Now, I promise you, I promise you whatever their specific challenge was, it had nothing to do with your product or solution. Okay. I'm sorry. That's the result. They were probably thinking about like, how are we going to maintain profitability? How are we going to um, keep all of our staff without having to fire anyone? How are we going to continue to increase revenues? What is a new product or solution that we can put out there in the marketplace right now? And that is going to help maintain or even grow our revenues. There is massive opportunity out here. There's massive creativity. It is your job to think outside the box first and then come back in. So how else are you going to do this? You're going to assume, right? Sorry, that's just the answer, right? We're, we're all in unprecedented realms, right? You start by assuming if this was the company. So let's think of it this way. I was working with a client um, yesterday. And one of her clients, and this is called third box thinking. I, I understand my client. I think about what their client's challenges are. How does my client, if I was my client, how would I help those clients? And then I take myself back here. How do I then help my client help their clients? Okay. So I'm going to just draw on this on what this ultimately looks like. But if this is me, this is my client. This is my client's clients. I want to put myself first in, in their shoes. If I'm my client, who or what am I ultimately trying to do for that client? Um, so who, she was a mortgage broker, right? I mean, her clients, um, her client's clients are ultimately probably her family, right? You know, my clients are the people that are like the people that are going to buy the mortgages. Um, the, the ultimate ones are the family that's around it. The people that are going to be living in that house, right? That's like, how do we help them? But for many of you who are business to business, and this is going to be, you know, how do we, how do we appeal to our clients? Um, Dennis, right. Who's working with the schools, right? So his, his clients are the schools, his clients, clients are essentially the students who go to those schools, right? How do I, if I was the school, how would I appeal to that? Right. Uh, if you are selling internal, there was somebody in here that was selling specifically HR solutions. My client is, and then their clients, clients, it could be our clients, clients. In this case, this could also be our, their employees, who are they trying to serve in this case? Um, but for majority of us, if you can think about who my customer is and then who's my customer's customer, how do I, if I'm standing in these shoes, how do I help them? And then we bring this back. And so it's like, I can help you to do this, ultimately allowing you to do this is how I want you to think of that, okay? That's called third box thinking. Um, we cover that uh, very extensively um, and through, um, through KO sales, you, um, so the first thing is you want to do is you want to assume, and it's a great starting point if you're still waiting for new information, right? But like, let's just start somewhere. Starting somewhere is better than starting nowhere. Don't allow yourself to get paralysis by analysis. I don't have all the information, so I'm going to choose to do nothing right now. That's terrible because at some point someone's already working in the background. 
you could survey people, right? How would you like to be approached at this point in time, right? What are some of your bigger concerns right now? Um, maybe speak to some of your existing customers um, and also check out some of your, the social media profiles, right? So, I mean, you guys all had like great, like elevator pitches. Like, honestly, like, why don't you start posting those as your LinkedIn profile or your LinkedIn status today? Like immediately go do that. Like I'll even put ourselves on pause if you want to like open up your phone and like whatever that question is, like, you know, post that as, as a great question to create engagement. And then whoever responds to that, like go ahead and start creating more conversation with them. That's a great way of like creating more connections, creating more engagement. Um, if you're with your list of 100, if you haven't done that already, start connecting with those people inside that list. And then, you know, maybe feel free to tag them into the social media posts that now you've created. So now they're more likely to engage. Okay. What if you have private companies? What if your clients are private companies? There is no public information out there. Okay. Research what you can. Ask yourself if I was the publicly, tra publicly traded version of that company, who is that leader in that company? And what information can I find out about them so that I can ultimately help my smaller companies? If your ideal audience is small to mid-sized companies that are privately traded, here's the thing is that they're, they're already trying to be creative and they're already thinking about new ways of doing business. And so if you want to go ahead and be able to like help more people say like, listen, like this is what, you know, somebody in your industry who's publicly traded is doing. How are you appealing to this? Or, you know, what suggestions do you like, you know, or not necessarily what suggestions, but you know, like how, like if this is what they're focusing on, how are you approaching yourself in different ways or a new way or something? Let's create conversation. I will appreciate someone who comes to me with like new ideas and new creativity at this point in time. Not someone who's like, let me help you, right? Let me go ahead and like, you know, go ahead and, uh, you know, be able to do this. But here's the thing is that we're really keen on still finding out more trends. So the biggest thing is I want you to start researching. Normally this is a workshop and I would actually break you up into doing um, some actual proper research of those companies that you actually want to do. Um, I'm going to save that for you for later. Okay. But now that you kind of have an idea of where you want to research, go ahead and, and do that. So this brings us back to kind of what we were talking about in, um, in the first half of today's uh, marathon. But what is the intention of that initial phone call? In the chat, I want you to tell me, what is the intention of that first phone call? All right, we already got some answers in here. Um, Keith, I appreciate how, uh, how vocal you are despite not being vocal. <laughs> so, <laughs> Keith has been very engaged. He hasn't been able to get his mic work yet. He's like, he's constantly uh, putting on there. Oh, and look at all the answers we got in here. Okay. So we got Gina who says to get the second meeting, to plant a seed, to make contacts, send a meeting, get the meeting, get the meeting, book a meeting, get, create trust. JR, how do you know you've created trust? I would love to hear your, uh, like what, what is coming back to you that you know that you've created that? Um, Daryl, get the face-to-face -face meeting, qualifying, um, see if there's common ground, says Doug, establish relationships, learn more about the prospect. You guys all have wonderful answers. At the end of the day, for anyone who's written something um, that like learn more about the prospect, um, here's the thing is I want it to be very focused. If you have an intention, name your intention, set that intention and achieve that. I love having the intention of the initial phone call because I know that the phone call is done when I've done this, right? Otherwise, the last thing you want to do, have you ever been on one of those sales calls where it just, the person just keeps talking about themselves and you're not, you know, we're like, I already got a few smiles and nods here, right? And the person just keeps talking about themselves and you're like, I don't really know where this is going. Um, Daryl says yes, right? Like this is, this is what we want to avoid because the person didn't know what their intention was on the phone, right? They thought that their intention was, well, I just want to find out more about this person or I want them to find out more about me. And so I just kept talking until when, right? There was no question to be asked at this point in time. So hands down, when do you know you've achieved your goal? I like to say the intention of the phone call is just to get the meeting, to get somebody to be interested enough um, or to be, to be interested, like, well, not 
That's all. I don't want you to be interesting enough. I want the other person to be interested in how interested you are in them. If this makes sense, I want them to be talking so much that you're like, you know what? This sounds great. I would love to hear more about this. Can we book a proper time Tuesday at nine o'clock, which is then to get the meeting. That is my intention is to get the meeting. Now this doesn't have to be a, a, a lovely. I would love to have a face to face meeting and I am okay. Like right now, like zoom meetings are like the, like the, the masters, right? Like I think zoom is like one of the few companies that's like skyrocketing in stock price right now. <laughs> They're like, Oh my goodness. It's like zoom's like heyday right now. Um, I love zoom meetings. I love zoom meetings because I get to see your bright, smiley, shiny faces. And at the same time, if you can't do that in lieu of that, do a phone call. There's nothing wrong. Only 7% of communication is in what we actually say in the words. So if you're relying on emails, you're leaving out 93% of your communication. The moment we add the phone aspect in there, now we're getting something to, um, I think there's an additional 10% in tonality or the way we say things. So now we're getting up to 17%. Once we add in like the face-to-face -face and the body language, like we're at like 93 or something. And I can't even remember what the other ones are, but there's so much in there. So when we see you, when I hear you, when I, when I listening to you, there's more language in there than just what's being said. So Remember here, number one, we're not calling on everybody. My recommendation is that your hit list is not the yellow pages, okay? Like your, your job is not to say, okay, who do I know on LinkedIn? And we just start calling everyone. Let's be very specific and intentional. The first things I want you to ask is, if this wasn't happening, if what was going on wasn't happening, who would I still want to have as my ideal client? Who do I want to go after? Who do I serve better than anyone else in the world? Maybe that's you. You serve interior designers better than anywhere else in the world. Maybe you serve engineers better than anyone else in the world. Maybe you serve a very specific geography. You're like, I just want to work on this specific zip code or postal code better than anyone else in the world. This is how we're going to define our, our network. And I want you to think of this like um, if you've ever seen lobster traps, Lobster fishermen do this really well. They set up little lobster traps and a lobster trap is like about this, like, I think it's a little bit longer than that. I think it's this big by this big, but it fits like a lobster who crawls in and then the lobster's trapped and ah, I can't get out, right? You would never see a lobster fisherman like throw out a giant ocean net and be like, I hope I get lobster, but I'm okay. Like with anything I get in the world, which is actually like garbage, unfortunately, literally garbage, but you're probably gonna get some other fish and like some other things like a whale. Like you're like, how do I even sell a whale? Like, I don't even know. I can sell lobster. I have no idea how I'm going to sell a whale. So you're not there to sell to everybody. You are there to like hand select. Who do I actually want to start relationships with? Now, this can be ideal clients. Ultimately, this could also be people like maybe you want to create collaborations with people. Have you thought of that? Right? Maybe you're a public speaker. Have you started to reach out to other event planners? Not because you're like trying to sell your services because you want to start a relationship with them. Right? Maybe you want to start with with people that are in um, like cohesive uh, industries as you, right? Maybe not like exactly the same, but for my case, I mean, I'm in, uh, I'm in sales training. So I might reach out to marketing companies who are also, who's, who are ultimately struggling to get their clients or creating all these leads and they're struggling to get their clients to convert. I may reach out to them at this point in time, but think about who else can you ultimately work with? And the biggest thing is that you want to be honored if any one of these companies did business with you. I would be honored if they like even took the time to like connect with me. And when we approach it like that, like I just want to create this relationship, it, it takes the pressure off trying to get the sale. Because now it's just like, listen, I would just be honored to like just under, like get to know you, understand you. And if we can book a meeting from that, that would be ultimate because I would just love to hear what your goals and your aspirations are right now. I would love to hear like, you know, where you ultimately want to get to. This isn't about the sale. This is about the relationship. So who do we want to contact? We're always going to go for the decision maker. Okay. This is usually, um, sorry, the, this is the Canadian version of spelling check. Um, it's the person that signs the check, right? For those Americans that we have online here. Um, and ultimately at the higher up in the hierarchy. Because you're a premium service provider, your ultimate goal here is to go for people that are strategic and visionary. 
strategic and visionary are concerned about how are you currently doing this task, this task, this task. If you want to talk about this task, this task, this task, then stick with somebody who's low level, but you're never going to get to a point where you're going to be able to sell at the premium services. Strategic and visionary people talk about goals. They talk about aspirations. They talk about the, the ultimate places that I want to be. That is the conversation that I want to have. So how does this fit into your one year, three year plans? How is your three year, how is your three year plan now adjusted because of this? I have no idea. Like, you know, well, I mean, what, what was your three year plan to begin with? Well, I mean, this is the things that we were planning on hitting, right? What are some of the creative ways that you're planning on changing this? Um, and then John asks, what about when those people seem to direct you to connect with a person uh, that's not the, or, um, but who, with the pr process person who is the decision maker, but who is it, who isn't as a visionary, that's fine. I'm fine with being pushed down because then I can always bring back up. But I ultimately want to talk about visionary. The other nice thing is if you get pushed down, John, as later on when you're actually moving through your sales cycle, you're going to continue to ask much more of the visionary and strategic questions. And what you might get is somebody's like, oh, I don't actually, I don't even know the answers to that. And you're like, great, who does? And now you're actually forcing them to bring in those strategic and visionary people so you can have a bigger conversation, bigger, right? If you end up talking too low, you're going to be stuck to low people. Okay. So LinkedIn, LinkedIn is your gold mine. It is your gold mine all the way through. Most people will have a lot of details on their gold mine. So here we have like Brian here and I have like, I have so much information about Brian. It is silly. Like Brian and I, I connect with him. I don't even write anything. I'm just like, Hey, I just want to connect with Brian. Connect, 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 connect. And Brian goes ahead and accepts me. And now I can open up Brian's profile and I can see uh, his website. I can see his mobile phone number. I actually have access to his cell phone number. I have access to his address. I have his email. I have his birthday. Like I could send Brian a birthday message if I really wanted to. Um, I can even see how long ago we've been connected, right? So there's a lot of information. It is so valuable to connect with these people before you want to reach out to them because they're going to, as you start to post things, as you start to build out conversations, you're going to be able to, to connect with them on bigger basis. So, which brings me to this point. Why aren't we calling? Hmm. Hmm. We can't fix anything until we know why we're not doing it. So in the, in the chat, whether it's you or whether it's someone else, why aren't people making phone calls? Jesm says he's scared, and I think everyone else is just too scared to write a response. Oh, here we go. No, you know, I'm scared. I'm scared to like Kim's gonna like, you know, yell at me. Uh, what else do we have? Scare, fear, fear. What Daryl, what specific fear? Jesm, what's what are you scared of? Rick, fear. What's what's the fear? I'm a millennial who hates taking on the phone. Oh, Emily, that's okay. <laughs> I give you, I give you options. I give you options. Um, text me. Don't call me. Oh, I love it. If you ever call my cell phone number, you'll actually get that as a, as the voicemail. I'm like, um, I had to change it. Cause apparently it was coming across as like too like bold. So like people were like, ah, I'm actually even scared of like leaving you a voicemail. So now I'm like, listen, I'm like, you know what? Like, let's be serious here. We live in 2020. Like, please text me instead. Um, fear. No one will pick up. Oh, Keith, maybe, maybe no one will pick up, but we have, we have options. Um, Doug, don't know how to break the ice. Ah, that's a good one. Do we, but do we need to, do we need to break the ice? That's, that's a good question, right? Like, you know, is, is that responsible? Um, I speak to people via phone, but I don't want to interrupt them. Okay. So I love that one, Gina, because it's like, do you know that you're interrupting people or have you told yourself that that's the story, right? You know, one of the things I like to, to say is like clients, they're just like us, right? And like, I mean, are you spending your entire day? Mine for the, the four hours that most of you are spending. I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm, my heart is like overwhelmed with gratitude right now. Um, but minus the four hours that like you're here with me, do you find yourself like in your day, like so busy that like you can't even, like you just don't even have a break? In which case then like you definitely need a lot of solutions. And I, I imagine there's a few of you in, in today's session that would like be like the ideal person, like let me help fix that. And you literally have no time to breathe, then let me help you fix that. 
Um, fear of rejection. Text me, don't call me. It's uncomfortable. Procrastination. Yeah, yeah, right. We'll do it later. We'll do it later. Um, they're looking. People are looking for instant gratification. I don't answer my phone ever. <laughs> maybe, maybe Brian. But if someone texts you, Brian, would you would you respond to their text? If it was like, Hey, Brian, it's Kim. Um, please give me a call back. Would you call me back? I don't want to know. Right? Let me know. Is that, is that curiosity enough? Rejection. Uh, don't know what to say. Fear of being rejected. Fear of rejection. I hate on fun calls coming in. So I, I hate placing them. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's fair, right? I mean, I, if I see a phone number that I don't necessarily recognize, um, even myself, I, I will send it to, um, to, to, um, voice or to voicemail. Um, but if the person texts me, I'll be like, Oh, who is this? Cause I, now I kind of know that this wasn't just a, um, just a fluke. The other thing I do is if I see a phone number that I don't recognize, um, I will typically ignore it. And then I will call it back uh, because there's so many spam and poof, spoofer calls and everything nowadays um, that you never know what what's actually coming through um uh and then yeah we're not full and then i usually google <laughs> before falling well that's very like proper of you right? <laughs> i use google okay so here's what i've heard from many many of you right why aren't we calling rejection right ah oh, you know they're gonna reject me they're gonna yell at me they're gonna tell me no oh no right i mean here's the thing is if we were dating someone how like we ask somebody for the date do we ever just like the first person that rejected you and said like no i don't want to date with you do we use that as an excuse and say i'm like oh i'm never making like asking anyone out on the date again like that's it like i am i'm single for life right maybe some of us feel that way but we probably won't put, position ourselves that way um i had one person who was very like she was very adamant that she was uh, like people are going to be mean she's like i am so afraid that i'm going to call someone and they're going to be like who are you and why are you calling me right now and i'm like listen if somebody like literally picks up that phone and answers like that like they probably have bigger problems than whatever you have to try to solve them like there maybe their problem is that they actually need to talk to a therapist at this point in time um yeah i feel like that <laughs> right don't know what to say don't know who to call and it feels awkward i kind of bucket these all up together because it's sales is a skill and one of the things I want to teach all of you is whether you are in a formal sales role or many of you are business owners, I do not want to turn you into sales people. I just want to teach you a skill and the sales is a skill that I think a lot of people need to learn and appreciate. Um, and then finally, I'm not a cold call person. So I love this one because it's like when my son was born, I swear I would have been like beside myself if the doctor would have picked up him and been like, oh my goodness your son is a cold call person. Like this is amazing. I can see it. Like they were just born that way. We're not born that way. Right. Like, unfortunately we're just, we're not prodigies. Right. I wish there was, maybe there's a sales prodigy out there. Um, but most of us would never sit at a piano and be able to play like amazing concertos and none of like, most of us wouldn't be able to like, you know, go to a, uh, a like hanging on to a baseball bat and be able to hit a home run every single time. Right. We're just, we're not that way. We just have to con constantly practice all the way through. Um, so Divya says in times like this, is it still okay to pick up the phone and call? I mean, I know it is, but with people working from home, um, et cetera, we might not, uh, we might not have their cell phone numbers. And if we have their cell phone numbers, what I'm hearing is that's probably okay. Yes. Like when in doubt, like, so one of my recommendations I would always make is always call somebody's cell phone number over an office line anyway. And now we're starting to see in the default where if somebody only has one number listed, chances are it's their cell phone number. So just go ahead and call somebody. Um, I mean, people still know that they need to work. Now, if you, if you're a person that is, has young kids right now, and you're having to deal with the addition of like the young kids and everything, that's fine. Remember your intention, your intention, your intention, your intention is to get the meeting, get the meeting, get the meeting, get the meeting. And if you call someone, they're like, listen, like, I just really can't talk right now. This is completely in like, you know, this isn't just the right time. Not a problem. Like when would be the best time for us to, to have, like, you know, can, can I give you a call like Tuesday at nine o'clock with that be better for you. At least if I'm expecting it, I'm planning it. I can like have my kids like in another room for like 15 minutes. Right. And if they say, well, no, like, you know what, probably like, it won't even be clear until like at least three weeks out. That's fine. Like, let's just get something in the calendar booked because I know like, like probably like me, I like, I would be excited to see that I'm already being productive when time comes for me to come back to the office.
right? Use compassion, use empathy, right? I would rather you get a meeting three weeks out, a month out, six weeks out than to have no meeting in your calendar. And trust, trust me, when yes happens, I want you to message me and be like, Kim, it actually worked. Um, Try sending an email first and then asking, yeah, so Andrea, you absolutely can. We're going to talk about phone calls specifically here, but all of the techniques that we're learning here, you can easily translate to emails. But I would rather you learn the hardest technique first and then default to the easiest one than to go, let's go from the easiest and then we work our way up. Let's get comfortable with being uncomfortable and then like land where we want to. But if you can, like, you know, go ahead and be, um, be as, as open as you want to. Um, Doug, asks, should you use scripts? So I am a big believer in no scripts. Okay. The reason why I'm a big believer in no scripts is because authenticity is one of the biggest sellers um, over anything. Uh, and number two, um, it's, it sounds terrible when people are reading uh, versus like being present to the emotions of the speaker. I am a big believer in planning and what you're going to say and preparing it. And so one of the things we're going to be doing here in a second is I'm going to be jumping you guys all back into breakout rooms and you're going to be pretending to make a phone call to each other and so you're going to practice it we're 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 going to oh some of you guys have already jumped offline you're like no forget this i'm out <laughs> i'm hearing like like out the, out the door um so what are we going to do right we're going to number one we're for calling for meetings we're going to know what our outcome is okay you're more likely to get um you're more likely to get your outcome if you know what your outcome is What's our outcome, right? In the chat, what's the outcome that we want to get? Be very clear, you guys. I need to know what it is. Meeting, 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 meeting. Yes. Okay. So we have, so now that we know what our outcome is, the, the outcome is the meeting, whether that is a 20 minute phone meeting in a day from now, a, an hour long meeting, you know, six weeks from now or a 30 minute zoom call next week, whatever it is. We just want to learn more about each other. The next thing we want to do is we're going to research our call. Okay. You're going to want to know who's the company, who's the industry, what's that individual stand in the shoes of those, those individuals stand in the shoes of those companies and ask yourself, what would be the thing, the thing that's most concerning about me? Like, what's the thing that is concerning me most right now? I promise you the thing that's most concerning is not whatever your product and service is. It is something bigger than that, but your product and service is going to ultimately help them achieve that. The ultimate thing that is not concerning them right now is that my bookkeeping is out of line. Okay. Like this is not like probably their biggest concern. Their biggest concern is how do I prevent clients from leaving? Um, how do I create new solutions? How do I keep my, my employees engaged and, um, and motivated during this time? Like there's bigger things than this understand that first and then we bring ourselves down okay you're going to prepare so today we're not going to do the research necessarily but let's just go in with some assumptions you're going to prepare i am going to give you a little bit of time to prepare and then we're going to ask for a specific outcome um rick has a question do we do we assume a warm or cold call for purposes of this exercise um i'm going to assume that you are connected to the person on linkedin that is how you got their information but you have never had a conversation with them yet okay so let's go with that assumption right now. You are connected with them online, right? May, maybe you've exchanged one or two conversations, but you haven't actually like, you know, we haven't actually had a formal connection point. Okay. So how are we going to open the call? So number one, hi, my name is Kim, right? Now, if you want to say I'm calling from, I put this in brackets, unless you are calling from Google or you're calling from Amazon or you're calling from American Express or something, some, some type of company that everyone knows the name. Honestly, this is irrelevant at this point in time. Um, Lynn, you're going to have to just write that out again. I can't, um, I can't read that. Um, and then just says another method to get the phone numbers. I tried looking on LinkedIn and no one has their number on there. So in which case then you're going to go ahead and you're going to reach out, um, and like, you know, continue to connect, um, uh, as much as possible, right? Use that introduction that you had learned in the first part of this, right. To be able to create engagement when the person has kind of responded back to you, you, you basically respond back. I would love to hear more about this. Can we get on a phone call Tuesday at nine? nine o'clock. What's the best number to reach you at? Like, like literally the moment somebody responds back to you, I would love to hear more about that. I would love to hear more about how, like, you know, how you're fitting, like how your goals um, are evolving over the next three months. I would love to hear more about that. Right. Um, and so then you're, you're, 
kind of forcing the phone call. Okay. Now, if the person says like, what are we specifically calling about? Just be like, I just want to hear like, you know, what your goals are and what you might need in order to get there. Right. Okay. Um, uh, and then, yeah. And then you have uh, a paid for, um, Okay. Um, so, okay. So, so if you put your location is entirely optional at this point in time, but honestly, like don't even put it in there because we already know that, um, that people only have seven seconds of attention span, seven seconds. I could easily use up like, hi, my name is Kim and I'm calling from KO Advantage Group. And people are like, okay. Right. And I could say, I could, I could even say that I'm the president of KO Advantage Group. All I'm doing is I'm throwing out a whole bunch of information and I'm using up my precious seconds and things that really don't matter. The other thing I want to go into is immediately, remember I said, instead of asking people how they're doing, I want to ask you how you're feeling. And the more specific you can get in how you're feeling, the more likely you are to get people that are going to do a little bit longer of a check-in. Now, these check-ins are like literally microseconds, but what it ultimately does is that when people respond with, I'm feeling good. So instead of I'm doing good, I'm feeling good, right? What I'm doing is I am reinforcing the fact that I am feeling in a certain way, which ultimately will help to make me more optimistic, more positive, and more available to new information or more receptive to new information. Now, this is where it really matters because if I go ahead and I call Anita and I say, Hey, Anita, how are you feeling today? Anita's like, I am so stressed out. Like it is just not a good time right now. Good. It doesn't matter what I say beyond this point in time. I'm not going to get into to a point where I'm ultimately going to get her to feeling good. I'm not going to go through my entire sales conversation. So I'll be like, listen, like, I would love to like, uh, you know, I, I would love to like connect with you. Cause we've been connected on LinkedIn for a while. Can we meet like, you know, Tuesday at nine o'clock for a 15 minute phone call? I would love to hear a little bit more about your business and your goals for the next year. Yes. Like, yeah, that's fine. Right. Like my, here's the thing, you guys, I am not hoping to get someone to go from a zero to a 10 in overwhelm excitement. I am hoping to get someone to go from a zero to like a one or a two. Maybe if I'm lucky, a four. I don't need to have someone to be like, oh my goodness, this is going to be the most amazing thing ever. I just want them to say like, yeah, okay, that's fine right? Like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Right. Like that's all I need. That's all I need. Right. Um, so that's the, that's the ultimate goal. How are you feeling today? How are you feeling on this Tuesday afternoon? Oh, I'm feeling good. Right. I mean, things are really crazy. I know. Tell me about that. Right. I know we've been connected for on LinkedIn for a little while. And I just thought I would take this opportunity to finally get to know the people that, you know, I would love to, to work with in a future basis. I mean, you know, so what, what like what, what were your goals or what are your goals for this September? And we start to go down that path. And then ultimately I want to get them to a point where they've agreed to a meeting. Um, and Greg says, tell me more. Yeah. You can say, you know, tell me more, tell me more is, is like always, always a nice one. Um, I, I just, I like always asking like, you know, why is that important? Or like, you know, why, like, what, what is it about that? Asking a, a nice clear question um, also, also works. So I am, um, <laughs> Yeah, you know what? We're going to break you guys into a breakout room because I'm kind of done talking for a little while. This is going to be a really short breakout session. Um, so I might move a few of you around a little bit because I think we've, we've kind of... Uh uh, moved around. Um, don't forget that when I break you out into breakout rooms, um, to go ahead and actually accept, like join the room. Otherwise you're going to be stuck in the, um, in the main room here. But what I want you to do is like, literally, I don't want you to, this isn't going to be a, a long breakout room. I just want you to try out your, your phone call introduction, get comfortable with it. And whoever like, you know, play around with, with the person. So, you know, if um, let's say Anita's working with Dan and you guys have one other person, like Anita calls Dan, Dan calls Mary, Mary calls Anita, right? Dan, give her, go ahead and give Anita a quick response or something. And then you go ahead and, and call someone else. Okay, just this, the idea behind this is just to completely get comfortable um, with asking this um, all the way through. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to recreate. What I said was, I said the moment I told people we were going to start practicing phone calls, uh, we went from 40 people to like immediately 16. Like everybody was like, I'm out of here. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I'm like, how do you get better if you're not going to practice? And if you're not going to practice here, when are you going to do it? Right? If not now, when? And um, now's the time that, that we 
definitely want to practice. Some of you went a little bit further ahead than the the actual exercise, which is fine. JR says it was too short. I, I'm sorry, JR. The, um, the, the intention was just to get you from the high my name is, and this is what I feel like. It was just the two phone call, two minute intro, but we will do more. We're going to do more. Okay. So I promise I'm not stopping you there. I just want to, we're going to do a little bits at a time as we go forward. So you're going to have more practice. I'm going to break you out into more rooms here in a second. Oh, you, of course, John, I promise you, you're going to do more. I promise you're going to do more. <laughs> I want to practice phone calls. I bet you like two weeks ago, nobody was ever like thinking like, I want to practice phone calls, Kim. I want to practice phone calls. And yet here you all are. Isn't that fun? Okay. Um, yeah, let's see what we got here. And you're so chatty in the chat. I love it. I love it. Thank you all so much. Um, so uh, let's see what we had. Um, if you use scripts, that was fast. Great exercise. We want to do more. Yes. Practice helps get over the fear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So let, let's understand how we want to actually position this call. Um, so number one, we want to make sure that we're providing value to the other person. So remember, so in the, in the first part of this morning, for those of you that are just joining us, we really focus on starting the conversation with a much more valuable question. How do you turn your elevator pitch? Um, into that question. Yeah. And Keith, that's a great point, right? Think about how you want to be sold to, right? Um, and this isn't about selling, but how do you want someone to approach you, right? I mean, be, be fun, be enjoyable, be bubbly, be creative, right? Um, whatever it is, like, what is the best version of you? And then think like, if I was just to meet someone, like, you know, what do I want to do? Um, so, and the other thing is to think about it, like, you know, this kind of like, what's in it for me. If, if I am listening to, um, if I'm listening to Daryl call me, I want to know like Daryl, like what, why are, why should I continue listening to you? Right. What are you ultimately going to do to help me? So we want to focus that conversation on the other person. What is important to them? Ask yourself, like, what do they ultimately want? Why do they want to meet you? And like, in, and you can feel free that I'm not a huge fan of this, this is something that I, I want to change um, in our programs, but you know, by, by bringing out, you know, at least something that I know about you, right. I, I know that one of the things that you've been trying to, like, you've been creating a lot of great content online and I would love to help, you know, get it in front of even more people, right. How would that feel to, you know, have 10 times the amount of, yeah, I mean, that would feel great. Right. Um, I, you know, I would love to be able like, you know, um, not, I would love, um, how are like, you know, you would use your question, right. How are you creating? Creating, you know, memorable experiences after your corporate retreats. Well, I mean, this is some of the things where I don't really know, you know, what you mean by that. Fair enough, right? You know, and then that allows us to say, okay, well, you know, uh, how would, you know, a photo booth help you in this environment or whatever you want to do. So you have to understand though, first and foremost, like stand, like going back again, standing in your client's shoes, what is that specific challenge your client is facing? Get specific. I do not want to hear big and vague conversations. Well, my client wants even more customers. Yeah. Okay. Well, who doesn't, right? Who doesn't want more revenue? Who doesn't want more customers? So that's not really a specific challenge. The specific challenge would be more of like in light of this situation or in this particular instance, my client is looking for even more customers um, because right now they have, um, you know, a lot of their customers are, are retail outlets or their retail customers. And so what they're specifically challenged by is how do I continue to create engagement or bring people into an environment and, and have conversations with them or create relationships. Very specific. Like I want to be so articulate that like we're actually picturing this exact moment in time on what that would look like. Phrases you're going to lose in your phone call. Okay. Is this a good time to talk? Okay. Because is it ever Rick just with a, a nod or not? Is this a good time to talk? Rick McCulloch. Just nod, yes or no. Yeah, hearing is like, no, this is never a good time to talk, right? And most of you are like, no, like it is not a good time to talk. It never is a good time to talk. Okay, so let's be very clear. So we're gonna lose this this phrase, right? So I, never, um, do, I, do, I never do ask that ever. You never ask that one? Nope. Good, because I never want you to ask it again. Um, do you I have, never do. I used to, but I, I haven't. I haven't published for the past couple of years. Awesome, Anita. Do you have a few minutes for me? The reason, the reason I just the reason I don't is because you're just giving them an excuse to hang up. 
Absolutely. Well, you come across this, this, that is a red flag sales, right? Like, let's be very clear, right? If I'm asking you if you have a few minutes, you never will have a few minutes. Anita, do you, do you have a few minutes for me? They'll, they'll tell you right away if they don't want to talk. They'll, they'll, they'll create <laughs> their own excuses. Don't you create them for them? Yeah. Um, sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. Anita's so nice. She actually does have a few minutes for me, but she has like very little time. Most of the time we don't, right? Or we're just, walk what I'll do is if I end up, somebody ever catches me, I always like, am typically like on my way to a meeting and I want to be very clear on like, uh, no, sorry. Like what is like, you know, what are we specifically talking about? Um, listen, my company is, uh, you know, KO Advantage Group and we offer sales training to entrepreneurs who are selling, you know, premium services. You're like, I, I really don't care like right now like you you've just officially lost all my time um as we go through there um yeah and close ended questions are out the window oh no <laughs> I guess. he's like this is everything that i say <laughs> and the reason i'm calling is right oh i hate this one the reason i'm calling is this is terrible just tell me why you're calling don't tell me the reason why you're calling right we just want to avoid all of this okay so once, once, like, let, let's assume, okay, because we're going to go with phone calls first, everything you're going to create in your phone call is going to work for your emails, because your, your most effective emails are ones that you're going to be using natural language with anyway, okay, but let's assume that we have a conversation, well, we call someone and we got their attention. We caught them off guard. They picked up the phone. Amazing. Okay. So now we go ahead and we will start to generate interest on why the person should continue to speak with us. Right. So we're going to start off with the, how are you feeling today? Right. Which that alone, that question alone was going to catch somebody off guard because they're not expecting the question. How are you feeling when we're so um, in tune to asking, how are you doing? Right. Uh, well, I'm, I'm feeling okay. Sorry. What is this about? Right. Well, I've been following you for a long time on LinkedIn. I would like I just wanted to take the opportunity to finally get to know you because honestly, I love what you've been writing on there. Listen, I've been following your company for a really long time on social media. One of the things that really impacted me was about your social consciousness, uh, your social, your social awareness or your social something or other, right? How is, how, how are you, like, how did you determine that that was the way you wanted to go, right? Or why, how, why did you decide that that was the charity you wanted to contribute to? How are you right now? Like, I know a lot of companies probably have to move a lot of their corporate functions. How are you adjusting to some of these changes? Right? Genuine interest, right? Like, like, how are you doing this? Right? How would you do this in the future? Um, then we immediately follow up with what that opening line is. You can go ahead and position yourself as an expert. Now, I'm going to give you what. So, one of you, um, Doug, was asking about cold call scripts. This is what I want you to create um, is maybe a longer script and then we're going to shave it down. Going back to the first part today, had I had more time, I would have written you a shorter letter. This is about positioning yourself as the expert. What are you going to do to help me solve my problem? Well, why are you the expert, right? Now this could be, I've done this in the past or I've worked with other companies like this. Um, listen, I'm just, I'm the same boat you are. And I just wanted to hear from other business owners, like what are they doing and how can can we can uh, potentially create collaborations that are going to help both of us achieve even more clients. But ultimately this should be no more than two sentences long. And remember, because we're having a conversation, this isn't me telling you everything. This is about me giving you a little bit of information and then asking a question giving you a little bit of information and then asking you a question. If I spend all my time inundating you with information, you have checked out at this point. Your results should be focused on. So last of this, um, the first part we talked about focusing on that result, that dream destination, that beach, that vacation. The biggest result that we can help people do is make more money. Who doesn't want to make more money? We should all be like, hey, yeah, like we all want to make more money, right? We all want to make more money. And it might not be because we want the money, but it's about what the money can do for us, right? It allows us to, to build a better business. It allows us to contribute more to charity. It allows us to, to create a wonderful working environment for even more employees. It allows us to serve our customers even better, right? That's ultimately what the money will do. Now we can get into saving money or um, saving money or saving time or increasing productivity. 
Um, it's nicer to cry in a Lamborghini. It also is nicer to cry in a Lamborghini. Like <laughs> mine, mine is like a Bentley. Like that's like, that would be my car. Um, so, you know, it's saving money, increasing productivity or time or efficiency or saving time. I'm going to bucket these all together because it should never be about just saving. It is about what we do with that savings. If the company that you're talking to or the their goal, if their goal is we just need to save more money, we just need to save more money, I want you to look at that as a red flag and a sinking ship and I want you out of there as quickly as possible because this isn't just about saving money. If a company is not intending to save the money in order to take that saved money and reinvest that money to help them make more money, if they're only looking at cutting the bottom line, that is a scary situation to be in. So we want to avoid that. Now you can still ask, well, we're only looking at saving money. Well, great. How are you reinvesting that saved money? We're not, like we're just saving money. Okay, like that, like there's no reason because ultimately what they're going to do is when somebody offers the exact same solution as you for cheaper, they're out of there and they're looking for someone else. Now you could look at increasing exposure. I, I put that out there because we get a, uh, a few people that are marketing people, right? And exposure can be a good thing, but I want to see how does that exposure ultimately result in something else and something else. But at the end of the day, if you can't measure it, it doesn't exist. So a few expert statements that you could use are things like, you know, we've helped people increase their revenue, right? You know, based on your size or, you know, here's something else I've done. I want you to, this is really for you more so than it is for the customer, right? Um, you could use these expert statements. I would much rather you be prepared and feel ready. But really what I want you to get to is to an idea where you're like, here's what I can do. Here's how I can turn it. Here's how I can make it better. So what those expert statements should do, if you know what you do better than anyone else and how you quantify it, like what you'll notice from these expert statements is these look very much like your value proposition statements, right? This is your value proposition statement. I want you to go ahead and take that value proposition statement and turn it back into that question, right? That question should be asked within as either the first thing or within like ask a question, uh, like tell me something and then ask a question. But if your question is not at least the second, the second question that you ask or second sentence that you ask, then you're asking it wrong. And if you get uncomfortable, just move right into more of those, of those questions. So I want you to think about what are some questions that you could potentially ask your clients and go ahead and start writing them down. Like open-ended, your goal here is to ask open-ended question, write them down because in a second here, I'm gonna put you back into breakout rooms and now you've prepared some of your questions. And I'm gonna turn myself on mute here for a second so you have some time to think. But I want you to think about open-ended questions. Who, what, where, when, how or why, those are open-ended questions. And think about what you're gonna to ask to your clients to help keep the conversation going. And ask yourself, is this coming from a place of genuine curiosity about their business? Or is this coming from a place of like very directedness and I'm trying to lead them down a path, which has a very specific place later on in the sales cycle, but not in the first meeting. Okay, it is, I'm going to give you three minutes, which gets us back to the top of the hour. Go ahead and write as many questions as you possibly can. All right, we are back. Um, so thank you so much for, for your question, Greg, in, in response to, you know, what is a great question that you would ask? Um, what would doubling your organization's performance mean to you? Um, so the response I put in there was that um, it ends up leading the, the client and leading questions have a very specific place in, in the sales cycle. Asking a leading question on the onset of a relationship um, essentially gets somebody kind of pushed into a corner where they're like, this is, this is already pushing me in a very specific direction. So where I want at the very beginning of the sales cycle, like, you know, when we think of our sales funnel, right, when we think of the top being very large and very vast, I also want us to think of our questions in the same way. I want us to think of them like as if they are... Um, how do we allow somebody to come up with us with specific solutions or where they're already thinking and either we adjust that or we allow them to, to create that. So instead of what would it mean to you, right? Um, you know, what, um, not, 
it's the mean to you that I, that I'm struggling with, because of course that means to me that it's something good. Right. Whereas, you know, uh, you know, if, if your organizations uh, was to double in size, um, what, you know, what impact would that, would that create for your, your company morale? Um, I want something a little bit more specific, even something like, um, you know, what would be the biggest, uh, the biggest hurdle that you would feel like you would need to overcome? Um, how are you currently, you know, planning your company? Company for where you want to be, um, you know, as you know, something uh, one and a half times versus where you are today. What types of adjustments are you already planning for future? Um, but I want it very specific. Like I want to be able to actually tangibly see how this fits in. Um, so, okay. And then are these questions uh, on first call as well? Yes. So your questions, ideally, these are going to be questions that you're going to ask into your first call. Um, and then will I send up the slides out later? Uh, yeah. So I'll, I'll have, there are actually two separate slide decks and we will have those available um, and then portions of the recording, but you've got to give me a little bit of time because apparently Zoom is very overwhelmed with a lot of, um, a lot of recordings that is taking a long time to to, um, to finally get the, the, the files processed um, and uploaded. But when in doubt, think of Dale Carnegie, because he says, listen, you can make more friends in two hours by being genuinely, sorry, in two months, by being genuinely interested in other people, right? If I ask you a lot of questions and I want to know, tell me more, like, like, tell me what's going on, then you can in two years by trying to get other people to be interested in you. Just be interested in others, getting them, them to talk to talk to you about themselves and like what their goals are, what they want to achieve. And that will ultimately help you to, to achieve more in sales. Okay. So what if you don't have enough evidence? Like, you know, we're kind of in new frames and everything. Just speak to what you can speak to your benefits, right? Speak to like, you know, how you have helped other people in the past or what your background is or um, what specifically they'll be able to have handle avoid words such as brand new or just launched because people will want to be on the leading edge but they don't want to be on the bleeding edge i don't want to be your guinea pig right when you've had more experience come back to me and then tell me so what you want to do is you want so if even if you have a just launched product or a brand new product it's really brand new based on old technology is just launched based on my history of working in the specific field for 15 years right it's based on some other type of, of resource. And when in doubt, be creative. Like you guys here, salespeople are struggling too right now. If you're trying to get into a company, go ahead and call the sales team and just like, you know, and just be like, find out more information about them. They'll just be happy. Like, honestly, their calls are like just as important and they're just happy to be on the phone with somebody. So if you have a company where it is a sit, like they have a sales team or a sales individual in the team, go ahead and start there. Right. Like, you know, just have some fun with them and be like, listen, like, you know, I was, I wanted to, like, I would love to be able to, to, uh, you know, work with this company, your company. Um, I'd love to get in touch with, you know, the, um, the main decision maker, Karen. Um, what are some things that you can help me out? Like, what are, you, what are the company goals right now? Right? Where, like, where do you want to take it? And, you know, and what are some of the things that you look forward to in a vendor? So that when I call her, I have a little bit more information, right? Salespeople just love to talk, let's be honest. Um, and then feel free to even go wide, look at for other departments outside of what your typical role is. So maybe it's it's not just um, in procurement, maybe you decide to go down HR, right? You know, and then you're like, okay, how do I turn this into more of a revenue center as opposed to a cost center? How do I help you create more employee engagement or morale? Um, how do I go into maybe the IT infrastructure and talk to them about how this will help to make their work easier because now it's all in the cloud or it's a SaaS model or it's compatible with what they're doing? other reasons why you might call hey look at this right maybe you're you might not be hosting a physical event but maybe you're hosting a webinar right and then you want to actually call people and you're like listen i'm going to be hosting some information session would you be interested in, in logging online for that um you know maybe you're hosting you know maybe you're having a virtual sale or something maybe there's some other type of method right listen i'm hosting a um a quick community group i'm bringing in 12 people from um from these types of industries just to talk about some of the 
things that they they're hoping to collaborate on all together is this something that you would like to be a part of now you become like the hub between all the spokes that is also really valuable for people as well and it gives you an opportunity to talk um, if you're hosting if you have any type of online methods or mediums think about maybe asking someone if they would want to be interviewed for for a podcast or a blog post or something else like this who doesn't want to just like have somebody like talk to like talk for an hour about themselves like you like it would be really hard for someone to say no I'm not interested in that right I would love to you know I'm I'm just creating some more content I'm spending this time creating um, you know more content on what other companies just like yours are doing to plan for the future I'd love to just you know have an interview session we can interview each other on on LinkedIn or on zoom um, it'll be recreated as a blog post you got an in okay and then when you call them back and let them know like I'd love to tell you more about our services the person's gonna be like yeah okay you've done me a favor I've done you a favor um, somebody is writing all over here so thank you so much for your um, oh podcast is what it says thank you <laughs> podcast yeah absolutely um and that might even be uh emily i think <laughs> Um, and then feel free, once you get the commitment, just get them registered, get them to do something. Pro I promise they'll never do it themselves. Um, so just, just let them know that you're sending them a meeting request, you're sending them a, a link. Now, when you start to call people, you're going to be faced with objections, regardless when it is. So at any, the objection is going to happen at any point in the, um, in the meeting or at the, the phone call. Like, it might not just happen at the beginning, it might happen in the middle or it might happen closer to the end. But remember, Remember what your intention is. Your intention is to get the meeting. Get the meeting, get the meeting, get the meeting. Regardless of the person gives you the objection, the, uh, the idea behind the objection is how do you maneuver around it and then continue to get to your focus of the meeting? Or do you allow the person that's standing in front of you, you're like, oh, I've been blocked. Okay, I'm out of here. Or do you say, oh, there's, here's the block. I'm just going to try it another way, right? What are you going to choose to do? Okay. So what are some objections that we, so some typical objections that we receive on a phone call are like, here's your common ones. I'm not interested. Sorry, I'm just not interested. Now's not a good time, right? This is, this is regardless of like whenever we're talking about, we're already working with somebody. Listen, you just listen right now. Just send me some information. Like I'm happy to look at it. Just send me some information. Um, call me back in the summertime. Oh, isn't that lovely, right? You know, you know, right now is just not a good time. Call me back in the summertime. This one, I have an objection um, around it, but we we might have to adjust this a little bit because it just, you know, we, we, we play. Um, we don't have the budget. I love this one, right? He's like, you're not typically calling someone and telling them how much your service costs. So I'm not really sure why they're immediately telling you that they don't have the budget. What if you were saving them money, right? And then, and then they could go ahead and reinvest that. How would that impact them? Um, do you do X, Y, Z, right? This is usually features, right? Do you, um, do you do, uh, Emily said that she's helping people with social media, right? Do you, um, do things in terms of, uh, blog posts? and call to actions and uh, postcards and, you know, direct mail campaigns. Um, you're like, that's a lot of stuff. Like why, why are some of those uh, features important to you? Um, and uh, yeah, you know, and Greg says, you know, the, the, the idea to the webinar is actually a good one because now it helps to create more of a call to action, right? It helps to engage people. When you get objections, your goal is just to keep the conversation going. Keep getting people to say yes. If you can't get yes, you can't accept the no. We respond with more questions. Remember, open-ended questions are also best, but as long as the person keeps talking, you're still on the phone call, okay? Keep on the phone call till you get the meeting. Keep them talking and then you're still on the phone call. They, they may hang up on you, I get it, but honestly, like, you know, you've done your best then are you going to accept the first no or are you going to accept even more um the question of cost is often asked too early or sometimes too late in the conversation so rick for today's purposes we're not going to talk about pricing um you're you're part of um like ko the ko sales you um we'll uh we'll have a, a phone call conversation but also we do talk about pricing um later on uh, specifically in module nine that you can take a look at so think to yourself, how would I respond to each one of these? What is an open-ended question that I could answer in response to each one of these? Uh, if I'm not interested, how, like, think to yourself, how would I answer this in an open-ended question? 
now's not a good time, if we're already working with somebody, there's all sorts of different responses. But here's some ways that you can do. Now I want you, so when we get, break out into the breakout rooms in a second, you're, you're gonna have different partners. You're gonna have a couple people listening and a couple people talking. I want you, if you are the person being called on, I want your job to be try to give one of these objections, right? Whether I'm not interested, now's not a good time, we're already working with somebody um, or any of the other ones. The person that's placing the phone call, your job is to go ahead and try to get around this, okay? Just for today, I only want one objection, right? Just a reasonable one. Sorry, we're just not interested right now. How do you get around it very quickly? And then, um, and so here's some ideas, right? So I'm not interested, right? This is like very, um, very pointed, but how could the hundreds of thousands become enticing to you? But maybe right now, like I'm not interested, right? Well, what are some of your priorities right now? That might be a very good, um, a good uh, way of getting around it. Cause then we still get them talking. Now it's not a good time, right? Like I, I completely get it, right? Is Tuesday at two o'clock better for you? Now that's not necessarily open-ended, but it does get to the point with get the meeting, get the meeting, get the meeting, right? Um, you know, the other thing you could typically ask them is, is, you know, now's not a good time, right? You know, when when would be a better time for us to have a conversation, right? Um, you know, what, uh, you know, when would be a, a, a more like a quieter time, right? You might specifically call something out. When would be a time when you have, you know, 15 minutes uninterrupted to be able to have a conversation? Um, we're already working with somebody. You know what? Fantastic, right? What are they doing really well for you? Um, what are some things that you wish they could do better, right? Um, what are some areas that, um, that if you had a magic wand that you would love to see improved? Send me some information. This is a fantastic objection. And too many people see this as actually a good thing, not the bad thing that it is because nobody actually ever opens the information. We just get the information sent to us at info at you know, xyzco.com. Um, so send me some information. I'd love to, what specifically are you interested in learning about? Uh, when, like, can we, like, can we book some time Thursday at nine o'clock to have a Zoom call review of that, right? Can I, pres I would be happy to send you the information. Can we go through it? together Tuesday at eight o'clock, right? Whatever it is. I'm at least I'm pushing for the meeting, push for the meeting. Call me back in the summer. Um, so in this case, I would have said what makes the summer a better time? Like, let's be a little bit clear, right? But you could say, you know what, um, I'd be happy to, um, how would, you know, how would spending, like if we were able to spend 15 minutes right now and even determine if that's a, like, if this is even a fit, would that work for you? Could that work for you? Um, that's a close ended question. But it's okay because at least I get them to say yes. Um, otherwise, it's you know what um, I'm happy to call you back in the summer. Um, you know what what are and then I would actually immediately go into my questions like what are your goals um, that you want to achieve by the summertime, right? Um, what are what are some of the things that you want to make sure that you've achieved by by September? Remember, you might be lucky and only get ten or fifteen minutes on the phone call with them. So use it use it if you can. Um, we don't have a budget, right? You know how much overall savings would you? need to see um, what are some of the what are some of the things that you're already you know cutting back on um, what are some of the things that you would love to see investing in um, do you do these features what makes those features important is this a sales call right here's the reality is like listen you know it, it could be right but listen I, I wouldn't sell you anything over the phone right now I'm just I just wanted to know a little bit more about your company and the goals so even see if this is a fit right when when can we just learn like when can we spend you know 20 minutes um, just for me to understand a little bit more about where your company wants to be by September um, and then I, I put this one as a little strategic mark, right? Because I asked you like what some questions that you could potentially ask your clients, right? What is your strategy for competing in like the rideshare market or something? If the client still says no, right? It's just really about what additional information can you get to, to get through this? Okay. Um, we're going to avoid this, um, for now, but other tips for success. Okay. You want to focus on your client plan your questions in advance. So you've already planned your, qu your questions in advance. Don't follow your script too closely. If you've thought about some of this, don't 
it's this isn't about reading your script this is about engaging with the other person and lean into rejection okay the reality is is that this is you're going to be rejected you're i promise you you're not going to be rejected more now than you were three weeks ago okay so the the, the same amount of rejection is just going to happen it is what it is but i promise you i promise you it feels so sweet when you get somebody to say yeah i'll sit down and meet with you i like when that happens for you, I want you to immediately send me a message and be like, Kim, it worked. Like, I can't believe this. Other tips for success is just stand up because it elevates you. It elongates you. It makes you sound bolder. Smile. People can hear your smile over the phone. It sounds a lot different than when you're trying to like, just talk really seriously all the time, right? It actually sounds better. It sounds brighter. So force it, force it, just be happy. Watch like the silly cat video of the cat falling off the table or whatever that makes you laugh like, like ridiculously. Um, and start by calling someone, you know, call a client, call a customer, call a former client, call a friend, whoever it is, get yourself in the groove of phone calls, right? Once you get comfortable getting on the phone call, the next phone call becomes easier. Call and call again and feel free to do up and um, practice. Okay. Uh, Who's ready for more phone calls? You guys all told me it was too short. So now I'm giving you plenty and plenty of time to make your phone calls. Yeah. So your goal here, right? As you get into your partners, okay? So, so same rules apply. One person's going to make the phone call. One person's going to listen. You'll probably have two or three other people that are just going to be listening and giving feedback. At the end of that phone call, remember the person that's making the phone call, you have singular focus. Get the meeting, get the meeting, get the meeting. Okay. Um, the other person, I don't want you to feel like you have to get the meeting if you don't feel like it's it's right like you know feel free to just deny the person um if it if it doesn't get them like you're not doing anyone a service by just giving pity meetings away i know they're not real meetings but like let's help make each other better at this um the other thing is i want i want the the person who's receiving the call to give one objection at some point in the call Okay. At the end of the call, once the call has wrapped up, here's, your, here's the rules. The person who's made the call starts off by giving themselves feedback. This is what I did really well. This is what I would do better specifically. The person who received the call gets to give feedback next. This is what they did well. This is what they did better specifically one piece of advice specifically and then the other three people or two people that were listening in on the call um you you feel free if you like to right you don't have to give any feedback um, but if you'd like to but always one thing they did well before you give a piece of constructive feedback what did they do really well okay um yeah thank you rochelle so that is it is there any other questions for yourselves you got lots and lots of time for this, um, where I'm going to actually dedicate about 40 minutes um, at this point in time. So 40 minutes. Yes, 40 minutes. So, you, so I'll be jumping between all of the different rooms. I'll be listening to you as you go forward. So that should give everybody a lot of time to practice their phone calls. Let's get you all broken up into, into cold call groups. There we are. There we are. I remembered to hit the unmute button this time. <laughs> Okay, so we're slowly bringing everyone back, back in, back in. Everyone's slowly coming back. Oh, lovely, lovely. Sorry, I was a little bit late. We had, uh, I was in one of the breakout rooms and we were having amazing conversation. Um, so thank you so much. I wanted to address this um, in front of everybody because it was brought up in two different breakout rooms around how do we engage with people? Like, like should we just like jump to the phone call or should we find another medium, specifically LinkedIn? And, um, and so I wanted to talk a, a little bit about this because um, I use LinkedIn oftentimes to be able to connect with people and then automatically like I'm asking for the meeting right then and there. So I will do this in two ways. Um, I either ask for the meeting, like if I'm connecting with someone right away and I have a very specific purpose or specific event, um, I'm ultimately going in and saying like, listen, like, you know, here's what I do. Can we meet like at Tuesday at nine o'clock? Or is it, if there's an event, like, you know, are you interested in being like, here's an invite to the event 
event or something else like this. I'm trying to get them to push to a call to action. But another way is in the event that you are going ahead and bringing people in, uh, let's say there you posted blog posts and somebody, ha- like I said um, to, to Carrie White specifically, someone's commented on your blog post and they look like they could be an ideal prospect. Like how do we engage with them? Um, in that case, then you might be using the phone call right away. Instead of just sending them a message, hey, thank you so much for engaging with my my post. Um, you might just like actually give them a call and say, hey, like thank you so much for engaging with my post. Like, you know, what was meaningful about that that comment or how is your company currently being impacted by this? Um, so that you're using in other ways. Um, use those that that first phone call conversation, the first question that you we asked in the very beginning um, at this today on how do we engage with them right away? So, you know, what are some ways that you're currently building your business? Um, because Vishal, I know your business, right? Um, what are some ways, like, what is one task that you wish you could automate right away? And start to see if you can create that little bit of engagement right away. We're genuinely interested and curious, right? They can maybe give us some information. That sounds fantastic. Um, can we get on a call and let me, like, let me explain some ways that you might be able to do that right Right away without any additional investment. Well, yeah, sure. Like who's going to deny that? Right. And then you automatically get the meeting. We'll have to treat the phone call the same way. It's only a brief phone call, but you might actually have it booked in 20 minutes, in which case then you're immediately going to lead qualification. Um, thank you all. all oh, you guys, I, you all seem to really enjoy that. Thank you so much. We actually do these for those of you that are uh, KO sales, you graduates, current students, um, even online. We do something similar to this every single month. We're actually going to be starting to do it twice a month where we're literally breaking people out and you're practicing as, as you go forward. Um, so I'm so appreciative that you were able to, um, to come and be a part of this today um, because this is really about helping you create more. Now, for those of you that aren't current sales you students, um, number one, what are you waiting for? <laughs> number two, um, if you're interested in, um, in having a conversation conversation about our instructor led programs. Uh, we, we do have availability. Um, I think we have one spot left for March. We have two, a uh, few spots left for the April classroom. Um, and as well, I had list uh, for those of you that are on email list, I did a February 29th deal for 997 for our online program. Um, I'm going to open that up again, uh, 997, just because I know there's so many people that are needing just this information. So that will be available to you if you're not available with that. Um, and we're going to have um, group coaching, uh, a month of group coaching with anybody on that. Um, yeah, how can I how can I get some? I have so many things that I can offer my company trade. How can I sum up them roughly while getting my point across? Keith, the the quickest answer is you're not to do this on the phone call. Like, do not do not do that on the phone call. Just get the meeting figure out where the conversation is going to go and then help them to, once you understand more about your client, you'll be able to better apply the information that you have. I'm going to put my, uh, my media request up here just one more time. If you want to have a conversation about any of our programs or anything else, you're more than welcome to do that. I'm also going to put the book link up here just one more time as well, in case you did not download my entire book for free, sell more faster book. There we go. There's two links up there for you. Thank you so much for two minutes past the hour. Thank you. I am honored that you got to spend this incredible amount of time with me today. Um, I am here for you uh, throughout the next couple of weeks. If you enjoyed this, let's maybe make this like a regular thing. How does that sound? <laughs> um, a lot of you were here for a long time, so I do appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you all for your all fe- your feedback, for your honest um, participation, uh, for showing up today. You don't didn't only help yourself, but you helped um, the people in this community, in this group. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Goodbye. Hey, Kim. Yeah. I just tried that link. It didn't work. Which link? The one at 502, the meeting, KLM 18, sell more faster book. I don't know if I downloaded that or not now. Who's that? Oh, that's so, Thomas. I'm like, I can't yeah. figure out who's talking. Oh, um, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it didn't open up. Let's just take a look here. I'll try again. Yeah, I can post like it's it's just a shortcut link. But yeah, I can it says page the, uh, not found. When, so weird. Okay, maybe I had this last time too. Oops. I'll have to double check because I do want to read that. 
I'm almost done my you uh, might have to um, maybe just refresh the oh this one says page not found either oh weird yeah and I'm gonna try this other one while we're at it this forms okay. one get your free e version oh. okay I got this oh, one okay that get one yes because e I, I put it I put it okay so that one should be meetings not meeting sorry that's my apology uh, com slash meetings yeah I got in late what a bummer <laughs> I forgot Got a, I was out of town today. Oh, that's okay. And yeah. I'm like, I'm suffering like a lot of other people. You can hear um, all hell breaking loose upstairs in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much for being here. You don't have to, if you have any questions, I'm here, but uh, I'll stick around for a couple more minutes if anyone else has a question. JR still didn't work. Which one didn't work, JR? Um, see if you can open it up from like a. Uh, I, I don't did know. The, um, I did the meetings one, and I did the um, the uh, meeting one, and they came up with different pages. The meeting one had your website, but said page not found, and then this one says all is not lost, and it has an ice cream that's melted. <laughs> weird, weird. Because like I'm pulling it up, and like I, and I can see it. So, um, can you can you maybe like can you open it up in maybe an incognito tab and see if that's that still happens? Browser. Maybe there's a cookies thing. Okay. Um, yeah, it's open. I was. That's why you have different browsers. <laughs> oh, weird. I know. Right. Weird. Weird. Um, it might be a cookies thing, right? So. Well, I got it. Thank you. Thanks for this. This was awesome. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you, Beat, for being a part of this. I, mean, I hope you you were able to to prepare a little bit more. You're feeling more comfortable. Let's let's go. Yeah. What did I tell Thomas? I said Thomas. I said yeah. Thomas, go sell some shit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And then there's virus, annoying virus. But good thing I read that book. Did you read The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday? I have not. No. Oh, it's good. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, I read it twice, I think. I'll have to. I got so to, many obstacles, right? I'll have to check it out. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yes, um, one of my one of my goals for myself is to get mm. mugs that actually say "Go sell some shit" because yeah. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> that's a really good one, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it's just fun like you know if you're not yeah. gonna, if you're not having fun selling what are you doing okay goodbye yeah. everybody i'm actually okay. officially jumping off bye yeah thanks again